ready? So will the meeting please come to order? We welcome you to the Metro Council meeting. Today is Thursday, January 3rd, 2019. Uh, tonight's meeting is the first of the year, so on behalf of the Metropolitan Council, we wish everyone a happy and healthy 2019. Uh, we are meeting tonight on a Thursday due to the fact that the first Tuesday of the month, which is our regular meeting date, uh, was New Year's Day. So will all members of the council, as well as the public, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation this evening will be offered by Council Member Brenda Haywood. Amen. Would you please join me in bowing your heads? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace and your altar of mercy to lift you up, to glorify, and to magnify your holy name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the trust that you have placed in each one of us to lead the city of Nashville. It is my prayer that we will lead with humility and selflessness, always placing the needs of others before our own. As in the priestly prayer found in Numbers 6, 24 through 26, Lord, bless us and keep us. Please be gracious unto us. Make the light of your face shine upon us. Lift your countenance unto us and give us your peace. The peace that the world can't give us and the world certainly can't take away. This is my prayer in our Lord and Savior's name. Join me in saying amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance. Thank you. You all may be seated. So uh, without objection, uh, we will suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Uh, is there a motion for adoption of the minutes? December 18, 2018 uh, minutes. It's been moved, properly seconded. Without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? No, Mr. Vice Mayor, there are no messages from the mayor. All right, thank you. All right, um, before we get into uh, elections and confirmations uh, and reports from any other committees other than legislation, uh, we do have a message from the council. Um, we have very exciting news. One of our own, one of our family members uh, got engaged over the uh, holidays. Uh, Ms. Roseanne Hayes is uh, standing over to our right. So on, on behalf of the council, uh, we are providing uh, these uh, very nice roses uh, to Miss Hayes. So, uh, Rosie, there you go. And of course, since uh, everybody uh, in this council chamber can perform marriages, there is going to be a fight over who uh, actually performs the service. Uh, Ms. Hayes, if I were you, I would might think about eloping, I believe. That might be better. So anyway, we're very happy for you. All right, so, um, so before we get elections and confirmations, any committee reports on matters other than legislation? Okay, seeing none. Um, and before actually we get into elections and confirmations, I think this is probably a good time to talk about the Community Oversight Board, which I talk about at most meetings now. So as you know, tomorrow's the deadline for questionnaires for the Community Oversight Board. Uh, we had 181 nominations. The questionnaires are due into the Metropolitan Clerk's Office by 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time tomorrow. So uh, with 181 nominations, um, there was a feeling that there needed to come, we needed to have a process within the council uh, for hearing uh, all the nominees to get them to appear before the rules committee and then also have a process to elect the 11 member board. 
So all this must be done by January 31st, 2019. So we have less than a month to get this done. Uh, so here is how we're going to do it. Uh, we have a memorandum that I believe now may have been passed out. Oh, here it is. It's going to be passed out to you. Um, and what I'm going to do is kind of go through it. Based upon the importance of the process, what I'm going to do is read most of the memorandum uh, just so that you, the guests in the chamber, the viewing audience will know how we plan to proceed. And then if you have questions as we go, if you'll just hit your button, uh, then we will actually kind of uh, we'll stop and make sure that the questions get addressed. Again, based upon the importance of this process, we want to make sure that the process is very clear, that everyone in this council chamber, along with the nominees, understand how this process is going to work. So um, I believe uh, most of the memorandums have been passed out. So if you will go, when you get the memorandum, if you will go to the third paragraph on the first page, the first basically explains what's going on in terms of the 181 nominees that we sent a questionnaire out and include 45 detailed questions, must be in by tomorrow, January 4, 2019. And um, if you will go now to the third paragraph, uh, to, facilitate, uh, to facilitate the necessary interviews, after looking at the number of people that were coming through this, what has been decided is I'm going to appoint four individual special subcommittees of the Rules, Confirmation, and Public Elections Committee. So again, what we told everyone was that they would be vetted by the Rules Committee. Uh, in order to make sure that we uh, don't spend 16, 17 hours trying to get people through, it seemed the proper thing to appoint four special subcommittees of the Rules, Confirmations, and Public Elections Committee to conduct interviews of the nominees over three separate dates, which I'll get to in just a minute. Council office staff will coordinate council members' availability among these dates, and council members will thereafter receive notice of their sub subcommittee appointments by separate cover. So sometime before this meeting lets out, every member of this body will be appointed to a special rules subcommittee. Now, uh, Mr. Jameson can confirm, but uh, the rules committee, the special committees do not have to have a quorum. You're hearing from people. Um, but this gives every member of this body a chance to participate, all right? So again, January 4, 2019, the deadline for return of completed questionnaires to Metro Clerk's office. Um, all nominees must file their completed questionnaire responses with the clerk's office by no later than uh, 4.30 p.m. on January 4th. Uh, if they do not file by that time, they will not be considered by the Rules Committee. Okay, any nominee who fails to file a timely completed questionnaire response shall be deemed to have withdrawn his or her name from nomination. Now, as of this afternoon, we had, we believe, over 100 uh, nominations. Madam Clerk, is that correct? Here, turn you on. Uh, we've had, of course, the 179 nominations for the council to consider, but less than 100 questionnaires have been returned as of today. Okay, but they still have, uh, individuals have until tomorrow to get their um, questionnaires filed. Yes. All right, so um, January 7th, 2019, that would be next Monday, uh, there's going to be several things distributed to council members. So once all questionnaire responses have been electronically sorted and compiled by the Metro Clerk's Office, the responses will be loaded onto a SharePoint site distributed via email to all council members and staff on January 7th, 2019. In addition to the questionnaire responses, the SharePoint site will include three uh, spreadsheets. <clears throat> One, a spreadsheet with all nominees listed alphabetically. Uh, two, a spreadsheet with nominees uh, grouped according to the manner, organization, or individual by which they were nominated, whether they did it by petition, by community organization, by a council member, or by the mayor's office. And three, a color-coded spreadsheet depicting whether the nominee's residence is located in an area designated as an economically distressed community. 
So if you remember, the Planning Commission gave us, I think, five different alternatives about how they define what is a economically distressed community. So you will be able to see how many of those, an individual fell into those five different categories. Um, there is a requirement, as you may remember, that at least four committee members, uh, per the terms of the Charter Amendment, have to come from an economically distressed community. Uh, the questioner is also going to indicate whether a nominee self-identified as residing in an economically distressed community. Um, the Metro Council Office is going to publish a web link allowing nominees to reserve a 10-minute interview time. So we are going to give everyone who wants to come in, who filed a questionnaire, 10 minutes to come in. After talking to the Rules Committee today, uh, we are going to send out basically three questions that they wanted to have answered in advance so everyone will know what the three questions are and the individual will have 10 minutes to basically present themselves, answer those qu three questions and say whatever they, they want to say during that 10 minute period. Uh, again, on January 7, 2019, all nominees who previously submitted timely questionnaire responses will receive the web, link via, uh, the web link via email or if they do not have an email account, they will be telephoned. Um, and then people will be allowed to sign up for slots during those three days, which again, I'm going to announce in just a minute in terms of uh, when we're going to have those meetings. Um, they will have until 12 o'clock noon, January 11th, 2019, uh, to turn in the, that they want to be, what time slot they want to have. Uh, we will do our best to send out reminder notices to get people to sign up for one of those time slots. Again, they will have 10 minute time slots uh, during three time periods, which again, I'm gonna get to in just a minute. Uh, the feeling was the mayor has nominated two individuals that you see in the bottom of page two, uh, Mrs. Phyllis Hildreth and Mr. Bob Cooper. Um, for purposes, uh, two of the members have to be nominated by the mayor's office. So the feeling is, is that we can go ahead and take care of uh, Th that review and that nomination process on Tuesday, January 15th, which will be our next meeting. The Rules Confirmation and Public Elections Committee will meet at that point, convening in committee room two, uh, probably at 5.30, which is their regular meeting time, and they will actually vet those two nominations, and then the council will vote on those two individuals at the January 15th, 2019 meeting. Um, for purposes of the other individuals coming through, what we have done is set up three dates, January 16th, 2019, 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., January 17th, 2019, 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., and January 19th, 2019, 1 o'clock p.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, for the interviews by those special committees. Now, um, January 16th is on a Wednesday, the 17th is on a Thursday, the 19th is on a Saturday. After specifically talking to uh, the rules chair and other members of the council, we thought it was important to have a time on Saturday, knowing that some people do work and it would be very hard for them to get down here. So we've given people as many different options as we can so that people can find a 10 minute slot where they can get here. Uh, interviews of all the qualified nominees will be conducted uh, at the same time by the four special subcommittees. Uh, again, January 16th, 5.30 to 7.30, January 17th, 5.30 to 7.30, and January 19th, 1 to 4. Each nominee is going to be allotted a 10-minute time period. Uh, we're going to have staff on hand to make sure people get to the right committees as we shuffle people through. <clears throat> Last thing that we need to talk about today is January 22nd, 2019. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, we are calling a specially called meeting of the full Metro Council uh, for the election and confirmation of the Community Oversight Board members nominated by petition, community organization, and or Metro Council members. With over 100 people we think are coming through and maybe 150, the idea was that we would have a specially called meeting of this body um, again, January 22nd, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. solely for the purpose of completing the election confirmation process and getting the nine remaining uh, board members selected by that time. Um, 
if there's a problem, we're still working through the process of exactly how we go through the election process. If there's a, pro if there's a problem, we have bought ourselves another week since we have January 29th, the following week, that Tuesday, if we, have, if we cannot get through the process on that first Tuesday. So uh, that's the process. You have the memo. Are there questions from members of the council? <coughs> I'm waiting. Okay, Council Lady Allen. Just, just a quick question. Will the Rules Committee talk about the voting process of how you get from 100 down to four? Or, I mean, are there are there other cities we can look to that have done similar things? Or how how will that logistical piece be worked out? Uh, we are still working on that. Okay. I may turn that over to Mr. Jamison if he wants to give information. I know that uh, we have experts in this body, including Council Member Rosenberg. Um, uh, there are different ideas about how we go about trying to figure out how we do this. We've, we've obviously voted on selecting people where we have more than two or four. But I don't think, uh, at least in my memory, having served on the council before, have I ever started with 180 or 150 and then tried to pare it down to 11? So um, we are looking at that very carefully. There have been several suggestions, but we haven't actually confirmed that election process. So Mr. Jameson point. is sort of <clears throat> hearing those things and working with you. I mean, if we, ha if we had thoughts, he would be a good person to share those thoughts with. He would be the best person, I think, to okay. share those thoughts with. But he has none to share at this point, it, it looks like. Mr. Jamison, do you have anything to share on that particular point at this point? I think the council uh, has uh, more than experimented with essentially a variation of instant runoff voting to their general satisfaction. If I read the mood of the room, uh, we're also trying to be mindful of the technological limits of the number of names that can appear on your screen at any one time. I anticipate you'll have slate voting just to move through this as quickly as possible, but it will be a, a likely lengthy process. But we do welcome recommendations. I don't think Councilman Rosenberg would mind me saying he has submitted a very astute recommendation that the Vice Mayor is considering, and we welcome any other suggestions. Councilmember Allen, anything else? Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, again, please take your time, read the memorandum. It will also, this memorandum is also going out to uh, all nominees. It'll go out tomorrow morning. Um, and we should at some point be passing out which special committee that you will be assigned to. Doesn't mean that you can't move around because we'll be in the four committee rooms, but um, we have assigned every member of this body to a particular special rules committee and you can be a part of the process. All right, uh, seeing any, if there's no other questions, we'll proceed. If you have questions in the meantime, if you will uh, check with Mr. Jamison, he can help you with the process. Okay, we are now ready for elections and confirmations. I am going to um, uh, Council Member Lee, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, sir. Um, the Rules Committee, and I guess I go through each one, Okay. Separately, um, appoint, uh, voted to reappoint for the Arts Commission, Ms. Jane Alvis, and appoint Mr. William Cheek the third, and appoint Ms. Matia Powell um, on for the term expiring January the first, two thousand and twenty-three, um, with a vote of seven to zero. All right. So. Um, we have a, a rules committee report that approved all of the three nominations for the Arts Commission 7 to 0. Yes. Uh, Madam Chair, would you like to go ahead and make a motion to confirm? I'm, I so move. Okay. You've heard the motion for the confirmation of Ms. Jane Alvis, Mr. William Cheek, and Ms. Matia Powell uh, to the Arts Commission. Do I have a second? <coughs> Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, those three individuals are confirmed for the Arts Commission. Uh, Madam Chair, I would like uh, I would like to make a motion to approve the appointment of Mrs. Tanae um, Hamilton Franklin to the Board of Health with a conf with a approval of seven to zero from the committee. 
All right. So uh, you've heard the motion uh, for the confirmation of Ms. Tanay Hamilton Franklin uh, to the Board of Health. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, that motion is adopted. Madam Chair. I would like to make a motion to approve Ms. Lee Fitz for the Historical Zoning Commission as approved by the committee with a vote of seven to zero. All right, there's a motion to approve Ms. Lee Fitz uh, for confirmation on the Historic Zoning Commission. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, Ms. Fitz is appointed to the Historic Zoning Commission. Madam Chair. I would like to move um, to up the appointment of Ms. Beck Taylor and the reappointment of Mr. Robert Deal to the Solid Waste Region Board <coughs> with the approval of the committee as in a vote of seven to zero. All right, um, there has been a motion for the confirmation of uh, Ms. Demita Beck Taylor and Mr. Robert Deal for confirmation on the uh, Solid Waste Regional Board. Uh, I have a motion properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Madam Chair. I would like to move for the reappointment of Ms. Adams Taylor to the Stormwater Man Management Committee with approval of the committee zero, seven to zero. All right. Uh, motion to approve uh, Ms. Renette Adams Taylor for confirmation uh, to the Stormwater Management Committee. Have a proper motion, proper seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, Ms. Ta Ms. Adams Taylor is uh, confirmed on the Stormwater Management Committee. I believe uh, that is your report. Um, yes, sir. Uh, if um, these individuals will stand when I call their Mr. name. Turner. We good? Sir, Ms. Dina Turner. Oh, okay. So uh, Ms., uh, there was one other, uh, Ms. Dina Taylor, um, who I believe was not able to attend. And there was, uh, she was deferred until the 15th. Okay. So that will show Ms. Dina Taylor, will, Ms. Dina Turner will be here. Uh, she was a confirmation for the Solid Waste Regional Board. She will attend at the next meeting. All right. So uh, if the following individuals will please stand as I call your name. Uh, for the Arts Commission, Ms. Jane Alvis. Uh, Arts Commission, Mr. William Cheek. Uh, Arts Commission, Ms. Mattia Powell. <clears throat> Board of Health, Ms. Tanay Hamilton Franklin. <laughs> Historic Zoning Commission, Ms. Lee Fitz. Solid Waste Regional Board, Ms. Demita Beck Taylor. <clears throat> and Mr. Robert Deal. And for the Stormwater Management Committee, Ms. Renette Adams Taylor. Um, on behalf of the entire Metro Council, we thank you for your willingness to serve and to volunteer your time and expertise. Thank you very much. Can I take them together?
Thank you. Excellent job. <laughs> Hit your button. Oh. Oh, I see. Okay. I'll be, I'll be reaching out to you. <coughs> okay. All right, we are ready to get back started. Uh, Council Member Dow, for what reason? Council Member Dow. Thank you. May I have a point of personal privilege, please? All right, proceed ahead. Thank you. I would just like to take a, a, this moment just to recognize the people that are in our chamber this evening uh, in support of the resolution I proposed with regard to asking Governor Haslam to grant clemency to Satoya Brown. I know over the last um, several years, many of us have reached out to our leadership and asked that we look at how we shape policies on uh, youth violence, criminal justice reform, child sex trafficking, and uh, issues that involve young people in our community. And so we're not negating, and I want to appreciate all of you who signed on to the resolution. I think we have just about um, all of us that signed on to it. I want to express my appreciation because I know many of you, just like myself, we serve communities where we want to see changes in our criminal justice system, and we want to see people rehabbed in our prison system and not uh, given uh, life sentences and given opportunity to come back into society, so I appreciate that. But I want to thank all of you for coming this evening and showing your support, and let's continue to fight on. So thank you. All right, thank you, council members. All right, so, so we're going to proceed ahead with uh, bills on public hearing. Um, the way this works for people um, who are new to um, the council chamber is that I will call the bills up <coughs> one at a time and then refer to the bill's sponsor. Um, unless the sponsor moves to defer the bill, the sponsor will call for a public hearing. I will then ask for a show of hands for those who are here who are in favor of the measure and those who are here who are in opposition uh, to the measure. If anyone who favors then wishes to speak, <coughs> you will then be invited to come up to the podium in the back after those in favor of speak, uh, and those in favor speak. I will then ask if any of those opposed wish to speak. Uh, if you do speak, uh, please start by introducing yourself and where you reside. Uh, then you will have three minutes to speak. Again, if you do speak, please introduce yourself and where you reside. So we are now ready for the first bill on public hearing. Uh, this is Bill 2018-1357 by Council Member Kendall. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by canceling a plan unit development overlay district on property located at 3419 Murphy Road, approximately 100 feet west of West End Avenue. It's 1.47 acres. <coughs> And if there's not an objection, I think I can take the second bill as well. BL 2018-1358, also by Council Member Kendall, ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from ORIA to SP zoning on property located at 3419 Murphy Road, approximately 100 feet east of West End Avenue, within a plan unit development overlay district 1.47 acres. Uh, Council Member Kendall, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I'm going to uh, request to defer these to the first meeting in February. I think I had previously announced that that would probably be the case. There was a meeting held, if, if I may brief comment. Sure, uh, Council Member. Th there was a meeting held in the last couple of weeks. I was unable to attend due to illness, but uh, I thank my Council Lady Berkeley Allen for conducting that meeting in, on my behalf, and I understand the meeting went quite well. Uh, the community received a new set of plans for that development, and we plan to have another meeting in the next couple of weeks to 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 review that again. So, I'd ask to defer it to the okay. So, both of those to the uh, council member. Has, uh, council member Kendall has uh, requested a motion to defer uh, 1357 and 1358 to the first meeting in February. It has been properly seconded. Uh, Council Member Henderson. I apologize, Vice Mayor. I did not mean to press my button. Okay. Uh, Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, 
Before we defer, I believe uh, Councilmember Kendall has substituted maybe interest to the public. Uh, I wonder if he want to introduce substitute and then defer the public hearing. Councilmember Kendall. That, that would be fine. I'm not sure that the substitute that's been submitted has the accurate description on it yet. Uh, Mr. That, Jameson. That was the reason we, we, we didn't do that. I think it has the old description. We got it. So um, would you like to wait? Is that better for yes. you? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> All right. So uh, we have a motion and it's been properly seconded to defer uh, 1357 and 1358 to the first meeting in February. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, those two bills will be deferred to the first meeting in February. <coughs> um, next bill is BL 2018-1403 by Council Member Syracuse and Bedney. Uh, this has been approved by the Planning Commission 9 to 0. Ordinance to amend section 17.28 of Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws relative to undergrounding uh, utilities, all of which is, uh, well, it's described in the bill uh, as presented. Uh, Council Member Bedney. Uh, yes, I move to approve. Um, so it's been approved. You need to call for the public hearing. I can do that too. All right. I, so, uh, <laughs> I will be excited to move to open the public hearing. All right, so there's excitement to call, to open the public hearing. Uh, any individuals who are in the uh, chamber who are here in support of the bill, please indicate by raising your hand. Any of those who are here who are in opposition to the bill, please indicate by raising your hand. Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Bedney. I didn't see anybody one way or another, uh, Vice Mayor. Thank you. That's why I closed the public hearing. So I, I move to approve. So I have a motion to approve. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, that uh, bill is adopted on public hearing 1403. Thank you, Council Member Bedney. Um, next bill is BL 2018-1413 uh, by Council Member Scott Davis. <coughs> this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RS5 to R6A zoning on property located at 927 Douglas Avenue which is approximately 285 feet east of Emmett Avenue. Council Member Scott Davis. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, I'm gonna open the public hearing. We're on 2018-14-13. Uh, All those who are in the audience who are in favor of this measure, please indicate by raising your hand. Okay, uh, anyone here who is in opposition to the measure, please indicate by raising their hand. I see no one in opposition. Do those in favor wish to speak? I see nobody standing up. I declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Scott Davis, you're recognized. I, I'd like to move for approval, but if I may ask, um, Vice Mayor, is that be on record that there is no one in opposition to this? Okay. And more people in support? And I'd like to close the public hearing and move for approval with a brief explanation. All right, so I got a motion to approve. It's been properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Davis. As I discussed earlier with our wonderful legal counsel, um, they'll be bringing, we'll be bringing a substitute here. We're gonna be addressing and possibly and looking at the unit count and increasing. Um, this development is being done by a constituent of mine who grew up in the neighborhood, has lived in the neighborhood for years, and I, and no one has came and came out in opposition. So on third reading, there may be a disapproved bill, but once again, she will have her folks and community out here in support. And, you know, and I just want to thank all my neighbors for coming out and let's move forward. All right. Thank you, council member. We have a bill in front of us. It is 2018, 14, 13. It's been properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of passing this on public hearing say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. BL 2018-1414 by Council Member Hastings. Uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from CL and R8 zoning to SP zoning for property located at 2210 and 2216 Buena Vista Pike and Buena Vista Pike unnumbered. 
located on the eastern corner of the intersection of Buena Vista Pike and Cliff Drive, 2.7 acres. Council Member Hastings. Yes, sir. Mr. President, we'd like to open the public hearing. All right. Thank you. I declare the public hearing open. All those in favor of this measure, please indicate by raising their hand. Okay. Uh, those who are in opposition to this measure, please indicate by raising their hand. <coughs> All right. Seeing none in opposition to those in favor wish to speak, then I declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Hastings. Yes, sir. Mr. President, we'd like to move for approval. All right. Got a motion to approve on public hearing. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt that measure on public hearing. We're now on BL 2018-1415. Back to Council Member Davis. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 1300 North 5th Street the northwest corner of North 5th Street and Douglas Avenue, 0.34 acres. Councilmember Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I actually would like to defer this with a brief explanation to the Feb first meeting of the move the public hearing to the February public hearing, okay. if I may. Okay, so this is to, no, the motion to, uh, to defer is to the first meeting in February. Yes, All sir. right, properly seconded. Back to you, Councilmember Davis. I know, I hope we all had a great holiday and a wonderful new year. Um, because of the, the council schedule being New Year's falling on our usual day, um, you know, some people in the neighborhood may have gotten confused. And this project came before us a couple of years ago, and I just want to give the neighbors a little bit of a refresher. Even though this plan is a whole lot better, and it does not, it does not allow, if I'm reading correctly, STRPs, which a lot of people will be happy for, but they just need to see it. So we're going to give opportunity and then let the community come back in February to give their public comment. So thank you, Vice Mayor. All right. Thank you. I've got a motion to defer uh, to the first meeting in February. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, that motion to defer is adopted. Uh, BL 2018-1416 by Council Members Henderson, Anthony Davis, and others. <coughs> Ordinance amending Chapter 17.24 of Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code regarding tree density, removal and replacement requirements. Uh, Council Member Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to move to defer this to the first meeting in February so that uh, the Planning Commission, uh, being a Title 17 bill um, applicable to the whole county, can review it and give us a recommendation, please. All right, thank you. Council Member, got a proper uh, second. This is to uh, defer this measure to the first meeting in February. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion to defer is adopted. Bill 2018-1417 by O'Connell, Allen, and Mendes. Uh, ordinance amending Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to allow public interior spaces to be afforded historic landmark protection. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. So, uh, Council Member O'Connell, this still also has to be referred to the Planning Commission, Got so I, I think you have to defer I it. I see that. So let's let's do that uh, to keep up with the procedural propriety there. And All so right. I will uh, remind me that the date we would need to refer to is? Just the first meeting of February. Okay, we'll do that okay. then to the next public hearing, please. All right. So the motion is deferred to the first meeting in February. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. No, uh, that measure is uh, deferred to the first meeting in February, and I think the same thing is going to come up with the next bill, 2018-1418 by Allen, O'Connell, and Weathers. Ordinance amending section 17.40.420 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to require preservation permits before any action within historic overlay districts. Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Vice President. Uh, we would uh, also need to defer this one to the first meeting in February. All right, so the motion is defer the first meeting in February, properly seconded. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. That measure is deferred to the first meeting in February. <coughs> All right, we're now on BL 2018-1424 by Council Member O'Connell, uh, Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from IR to IG zoning for property located on Lebanon Pike, unnumbered approximately 460 feet east of the terminus of Freightliner Drive, 4.63 acres, Council Member O'Connell. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, I declare the public hearing open. All those who are here in favor of the uh, measure, please indicate by raising your hand. All those who are here in opposition, please indicate by raising their hand. I see no one in opposition. I de uh, does anybody who, uh, no one wishes to speak, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval, please. I have a motion to approve. This is on 2018-1424, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, BL 2018-1425 by Council Member Murphy. Ordinance to amend Title 17, a Metropolitan Code of Laws, by changing from R6 to SP zoning on properties located at 4603 Sloan Road and 4409 and 4411 West Lawn Drive at the corner of Sloan Road and West Lawn Drive, 1.03 acres to permit six multifamily residential units. Council Member Murphy. I would like to open the public hearing. I declare the public hearing open. Those who are here in favor of the measure, please indicate by raising their hand. Those who are here in opposition to the measure, please indicate by raising their hands. Councilmember Murphy, I can't see anybody behind that there wall. There was no one. <clears throat> okay. Uh, those uh, who are in favor wish to speak. Okay, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Murphy. Thank you. I'd like to move for approval while, I'm sorry, no, back that up. Move for <coughs> approval and have the third reading on February 5th. We're going to be coming with an amendment that clarifies um, that this is single family homes and that there won't be Airbnbs. And that should be the only technical correction. Okay. So, for purposes of tonight, you're simply moving the, the moving, bill. Moving, but have third on the fifth. That's going to work. Just move approval. Just yeah. Move okay. Approval. So, I got a motion to approve, uh, properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt on public hearing. So we're now on 2018-1426 by Council Member Sledge. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RA to SP zoning on properties located at 1114 <coughs> West Grove Avenue, approximately 80 feet east of 12th Avenue South, 0.24 acres to permit five multifamily residential units. Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. To a notice issue, this will need to be moved to the public hearing in February as well. Okay. So um, we are moving this. There's a motion to move this to the first meeting in February. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion is adopted to move this to the first meeting in February. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, BL 2018-1427 by Council Member Anthony Davis. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from CL, R10, and R6 to MULA zoning for properties located at 1600 Riverside Drive and 1600 Porter Road, approximately 500 feet south of Schinkel Avenue, 1.51 acres. Council Member Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'll open the public hearing. All right. So I declare the public hearing open. All those who are in favor of this uh, measure, please indicate by raising their hands. Okay. Uh, anybody in opposition to the measure, please indicate by raising their hands. I see no one. Uh, for those who are in favor, do you wish to speak? Anyone? All right. I declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'll move for approval. Okay. So I got a motion to approve. This is 1427, properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt 1427 on public hearing. Uh, BL 2018-1428, this is by Syracuse and Bedney. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from OR20 to MUL zoning for property located at 2540 Park Drive, approximately 330 feet north of Lebanon Pike, within the do downtown Donaldson Urban Design Overlay District. Uh, Council Member Bedney. You probably want me to open the public hearing, right? Uh, well, you can give a committee report, but that's not necessary on this one. So uh, I'm going to open up the uh, public hearing. Uh, those who are here in favor of the, uh, the motion, please indicate by raising your hand. <coughs> I think I saw one. Mm -hmm. uh, those who are here in opposition to the measure, please indicate by raising your hand. Um, I see no one in opposition. Those, the one individual who is in favor, do you wish to speak? Shaking their heads no. I declare the public hearing uh, closed. Councilmember Bedney. Um, 
In that case, uh, I move to close the public hearing and move the request approval of the legislation. Okay, I got a motion to approve. This is 1428, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. 1428 is adopted on public hearing. Uh, BL 2018 1429 by Council Member Elrod. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RA to RM20A, zoning for property located at 522 Peregrine Mills Road, approximately 530 feet southwest of Valley Ridge Drive. It's 2.05 acres. Council Member Elrod. I move to open the public hearing, please. Okay, so uh, I declare the public hearing opened. Uh, those who are here in favor of the measure, please indicate by raising your hand. Murphy, abstain. I don't see anyone. Those who are here in opposition to the measure, please indicate by raising their hand. So I do see one hand. Uh, would you like to speak on the measure? So if you would come up to the um, podium. Good. And if you would simply uh, state your name and uh, give me your address and then you have three minutes. Yes, uh, my name is Eugene Dries, that's spelled D-R-I-E-S. Um, I reside at, uh, on Valley Ridge Drive at uh, 3839 Valley Ridge Drive. Uh, I have lived there for 10 years, bought into that neighborhood at the bottom of the market, and it's awesome now. We've got single family residences going up right next to this, and I would like to see owners and I would like to see single-family residences. We have a huge stock of rental apartments all around the area, and my issue is that I believe that our neighborhood, which has grown so much, would benefit from more single-family residences. All right. Any other comments? Nothing to add. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Elrod. You've been holding on to say, I'll talk to you in the hallway also. I haven't met you yet, so I'm, I would talk to you about your concerns. Um, with that, I'll, I'll uh, uh, meet with the gentleman and I'll move, uh, move to close the public hearing and pass on second consideration. All right. Or so second we, uh, reading. We, we have a, a motion to approve on public hearing, uh, properly seconded. Any other discussion <laughs> on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this measure is adopted on public hearing, 1429. Uh, we're now on BL 2018-1430 uh, by Council Member Roberts. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from R6 to CSA zoning for properties located at 5012 and 5014 Kentucky Avenue, 1202 51st Avenue North, 1003 and 1003 B 51st Avenue North, and 5100 Michigan Avenue approximately 286 and 450 feet east of 52nd Avenue North, 0.57 acres. Council Member Roberts. Councilman Cooper. It's changed over to Council Member Cooper. And right. um, much less glamorous, uh, but I move to open the public hearing. All right, thank you, Council Member Cooper. The public hearing is now open. Uh, if people are here in favor of the measure, if you would indicate by raising your hand. Anybody here in opposition to the measure, please indicate by raising your hand. I see one hand way in the back. Would you like to speak? Okay, come on up. Uh, if you would, state your name and uh, your address. Uh, Lee Morris, 4915 Illinois Avenue. I'm really not in opposition, but I'm not sure. I'm just concerned about the parking on 51st and all the streets on the left and right of that. Because right now you've built a lot of stuff up there. I can't get up, turn on to 51st half the time. And I can't park my cars half the time either. Uh, so that's my only concern. And I was wondering if you would address that before you approve this. All right, so Council Member Cooper, um, well, uh, and you can't necessarily address it, you may have to take it later, but. Yes, uh, if that's all right, I'd like to meet with you after this moment here and then move for adoption uh, on the first reading here. Okay. So 
So what I would do, what we're going to do is we're going to close the public hearing, and then if you, Council Member Cooper, will come outside and he'll just talk to you out in the back. Okay. Um, only, you've still got time. If you do, you have anything else? Only any thing other I have to go to work in a few minutes, so I'll be right there. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Move All right. to close the public hearing. Okay. I declare the public hearing closed. Uh, and then Council Member Cooper. Move for adoption on uh, first reading with two more readings to follow. All right. So we are on BL 2018-1430. Uh, this is a motion to approve on public hearing. Um, it's been properly seconded. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you, Council Member Cooper. <coughs> We're now on BL 2018-1431 by Council Member Swope. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. By changing from RA, uh, RA, AR2A to SP zoning on properties located at 5960 Edmondson Pike and Edmondson Pike unnumbered, the northeast corner of Edmondson Pike and Mount Pisgah Road, 13.4 acres to permit 38 single family residential lots. Council Member Swope. Thank you, Your Honor. Move to open the public hearing, please. All right. Thank you. Uh, declare the public hearing open. Uh, those who are here in support of the measure, if you would, please indicate by raising your hand. Right. Those who are here opposed to the measure, if you would please indicate by raising your hand. I don't see anybody in the back. Those who in favor wish to speak. All right. I declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Swope. I would move approval with a brief comment. All right. So I've got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Council Member Swope. Thank you, sir. Uh, not only is this a development for 38 single family homes in the $500 to $700,000 range, on a beautiful piece of property, but the developer is also donating the land necessary to build a roundabout at the intersection of Mount Pisgah, Banbury, and Edmondson, which this is the northeast corner of. Um, it is a considerable gift of land to the city, and I want to publicly again ask Public Works and the Mayor's Office to approve my little half million dollar roundabout, which will solve an immense amount of traffic through my district. And with that, I move approval. All right, so got a proper motion, properly seconded. We're on 1431. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt 1431 on public hearing. All right, uh, Bill 2018-1432 by Council Member Sledge. <coughs> uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws uh, by changing from R6 to OR20 zoning for property located at 49 Wharf Avenue approximately 300 feet, 300 feet south of Lafayette Street, 0.13 acres. Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Those who are here in favor of the measure, please indicate by raising their hand. Okay, those who are here in opposition to the measure, please indicate by raising your hand. I don't see anyone in opposition. Uh, would the individual like to speak? Nope. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval. Okay, got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt 1432 on public hearing. BL 2018 1433 by Council Member O'Connell. Uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from MUN to MULA, zoning on property located at 1239 6th Avenue North at the southwest corner of Monroe Street and 6th Avenue North within the Germantown Historic Preservation Overlay District and the Phillips Jackson Street Redevelopment District, 0.14 acres. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Those who are here in favor of the measure, please indicate by raising your hand. Okay, those who are here in opposition to the measure, please indicate by raising your hand. I see no opposition. Uh, would the individual like to speak? No. So I declare the public hearing closed. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval. A brief explanation. Okay, I got a motion to approve on public hearing. It's been properly seconded. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. This one, uh, folks might remember this uh, parcel as the one that was formerly home to the Mad Platter restaurant in Germantown. Uh, the new owners are taking excellent care of the property, have been very engaged with the community, uh, and are, are basically looking to do this rezoning to allow an enhancement that will preserve the, uh, the building and, and allow them to enhance it well into the future. And uh, they've got the community support for this, and I'm looking forward to passing it on third. Thank you. 
All right, thank you, council member. Uh, this has been properly moved, properly seconded. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, that uh, measure is adopted on public hearing. We're now on BL 2018-1434 by council member Kendall. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RS5 to R6A zoning on property located at 1523 14th Avenue North, approximately 50 feet north of Underwood Street, 0.2 acres. Council Member Kendall. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open public hearing, please. All right, so I declare the public hearing open. Those who are here in favor of the measure, please indicate by raising your hands. All right, thank you. Those who are here in opposition to the measure, please indicate by raising your hands. Um, I don't see anybody in opposition. Would you like to speak? So to clear the public hearing closed, Council Member Kendall. Move approval. <coughs> Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt 1434 on public hearing. 1435, uh, this is Council Member Hastings. Um, ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from SPR to RM15 <coughs> zoning for various properties located on 9th Avenue North, approximately 100 feet north of Dominican Drive, 1.65 acres. Council Member Hastings. Yes, sir, Mr. President, again, we'd like to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Those who are here in favor of the measure, please indicate by raising your hand. All right, thank you. Those who are here in opposition to the measure, please indicate by raising your hand. I see no one in opposition with those who are in favor of wish to speak. I see some head shaking, so uh, no, I declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Hastings. Yes, sir. Mr. President, we'd like to move for approval. Okay, I got a motion to approve. This is 1435, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. 1435 is adopted on public hearing. BL 2018-1436 by Council Member Lee. This is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws <coughs> by changing from AR2A to SP zoning on properties located at 3939 and 3947 Pin Hook Road, approximately 880 feet, e feet east of Old Hickory Boulevard, 14.5 acres. Council Member Lee. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I'd like to have open the community. All right, so I'm gonna open the public hearing. All those who are here in favor of the measure, please indicate by raising your hand. Okay, thank you. Uh, those who are in opposition to the measure, please indicate by raising your hand. I see no one in opposition. Those who are in favor wish to speak. All right, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Lee. I would like to uh, make a motion to approve. All right, so I got a motion to approve. We're on 1436, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt 2018-1436 on public hearing. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. BL 2018-1437 by Council Member Kendall. <clears throat> this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RS5 to MULA, zoning for property located at 701 Lena Street, northwest corner of Clifton Avenue and Lena Street, 0.17 acres. Council Member Kendall. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open public hearing, please. All right, I've declared the public hearing open. Those who are here in favor of the measure, please indicate by raising your hand. Those who are here in opposition to the measure, please indicate by raising your hand. I see no one raising their hands. I declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Kendall. Move approval. <coughs> Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt 1437. BL 2018-1438, <clears throat> Council Member Swope. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from AR2A to RS10 and RM4 zoning for properties located at Bluff Road, unnumbered, approximately 930 feet southwest of Nolensville Pike, 60.19 acres. Council Member Swope. Thank you, Your Honor. Move to open the public hearing. All right, so declare the public hearing open. Those who are here in favor of the measure, please indicate by raising your hand. 
All right, thank you. Those who are here in opposition to the measure, please indicate by raising your hand. All right, so we have uh, those in favor and those opposed. Would anybody who's in favor of the m measure please come forward, uh, state your name, address, and you've got three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the council. I'm Roy Dale. I was at 1657 Stokely Lane in Hermitage, Tennessee, <clears throat> and I represent the, cl uh, the uh, client for this property. They've already purchased this land. It's a group out of California. They're a very environmentally uh, conscious company. They are going to build on this property uh, homes that are really based upon the topography that exists. Uh, the policy for the property is neighborhood evolving, and neighborhood evolving allows a lot of density, quite honestly, but they're only asking for four units per acre. Actually, a part of the property is going to be a single-family subdivision, and it'll be less than three units per acre, and the other part will be around four units per acre. Um, this, the, we've had a community meeting. Um, I'm surprised that there's anybody in opposition because we pretty well vetted this to the community. We've worked very diligently with the council member. Uh, there was a very short fuse on this. That's why you're seeing a base zoning tonight. Um, a lot of times you don't have an opportunity. Uh, you don't have the time necessary to probably do a specific plan. But in this case, based upon the product that this client is going to be building, the homes that they're going to be building, They'll be spending a great deal of, of time doing topographic surveys and boundary surveys and simply don't have time to prepare a detailed plan at this time. But the zoning code, this is a base zoning. It's an R, uh, S10 zoning and RM4 zoning. You have uh, requirements under the current zoning code that uh, ensures that things that are built mm -hmm. on this property are built so properly. But I can tell you based upon my experience with this client from California, that's exactly what they do. This is going to be a, a really uh, nice development for this community. It will be a jewel for this community, and it's going to be at a very low density, much lower than what would normally be allowed under the neighborhood evolving policy. And so I'll let Council Member Swope sort of fill in what I've missed out here, and uh, I greatly appreciate you following his lead. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody, w anybody else in favor wish to speak? Okay, before we get to the uh, folks who are um, not in favor, uh, Council Member Swope, this is a disapproved bill, so we have to show some slides. So I'm going to uh, stop. I'm going to suspend the public hearing for just a moment, so we can show the slides. I'm going to refer back over to the uh, uh, Planning Department. This is a request to rezone property from AR2A Agricultural Residential to RS10 and RM4. The Planning Commission recommendation is to disapprove. Uh, the current zoning of the property is AR2A, which is agricultural residential and requires a two-acre minimum lot size. The proposed zoning are RM4, multifamily residential, four units per acre, and RS10. The RM4 is on the lower portion of the property, and the RS10 is on the northern portion. Uh, this is another sh shot of the property. The, it is rotated, um, so the, the street is to the south now. Uh, the policy on the property is T3 Suburban Neighborhood Evolving and Conservation. The conservation policy on the property recognizes the presence of um, streams, floodways, stream buffer, in addition to steep slope areas. Planning Commission recommended disapproval of the request as the request is inconsistent with the land use policy for the property and does not um, provide for a context-sensitive context solution to a property that has environmental constraints. So thank you. Uh, we are now going to uh, go to those who wish to speak in opposition to the measure. If you would come forward. Anybody else wishing to speak in opposition, if you would come on up, um, come on up to the podium and again, uh, state your name and address, and you've got three minutes. Hi, I'm Curtis Parker. I live in the Arlington Heights neighborhood that's on this hillside and overlook this, this property. This is an area that is a very large undeveloped forest land. It's a beautiful part of the land in the county. It has two very large caves up on top that are pretty amazing as you go down in and hike, and so preservation of that is important. The, the original proposal for this was to develop single family homes. The current plan is to put 90 multi-use family units on this and 
Given that this hillside is in a very beautiful area, it's up on top of the hill overlooking the area to put multifamily units on this seems disingenuous with some of the, the, the current homes that are in the area. They are developed, they look very nice, the, the multifamily units, they have a Mediterranean style, which is very nice, but is different than what the rest of the area is. And so concerned about property values and just the, the land with, with a change of putting multifamily units in an area that's all single family homes. And also there are a few questions about the developer. This is a public company that's a pink sheets listed developer that's a penny stock company. In their filings they have a statement that states a substantial concern about, or substantial doubt about their going concern to be able to continue. They did get some debt recently that helps, but they have more debt than assets, and so there's some questions about some of the financial stability of this, and the, the homeowners are expected to finance a lot of this. So just a few questions about the, the development and then the concern about the land. All right. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? <clears throat> I declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Swope. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, thank you for your comments. And if you would meet me outside, everybody who raised their hands in opposition to this, we had a community meeting on this and only two people showed up. Um, one of the reasons this was a disapproved bill, if I may, was there was only one ingress and egress to this whole piece of property. Well, the developer has bought an additional piece of property right next to it to alleviate that problem. They are very well aware of the conservation and environmental constraints that exist on this property. It's 90 total homes, 32 of which are multifamily and the remainder are single family homes. Uh, done in phases, that's the reason it's being, or we're asking for a rezone on two different base zonings. One's for the multifamily up that exists within the constraints of the hillside, and the other, the single family is down below. With that, one, I'd like to meet with you all outside here in just a second, because we're just about done with public hearing. Uh, and if necessary, I will have a second community meeting on this. Uh, between now and third reading, but I would ask you all to pass this on second reading, and if we need to come back and change it, I will. All right, thank you, Council Member. So um, you're moving to pass this measure on second, on, on public hearing, yeah. okay? So I've got a motion to pass. Uh, it's been properly seconded. Any discussion on this measure? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on public hearing. Councilmember Bedney, uh, for what reason? You're at. <clears throat> We've got Bedney for the court is for staying. Okay. So, Madam Clerk, if you will uh, list Councilmember Bedney sitting at a desk with no microphone as abstaining. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> That's no microphone at that desk. All right. Um, so, um, anyway, the measure passes on um, public hearing. All right. That concludes our business on public hearing. We are now on um, the consent agenda resolutions um, and uh, other resolutions. So um, I'm going to read the resolu resolution numbers that are on the consent agenda. Uh, if you will listen carefully, because uh, I want to make sure that we have this right. We've had a couple of changes. Um, so these are the measures that I have on the consent agenda. The RS, uh, RS 2019-1532. RS 2019-1533, RS 2019-1534, RS 2019-1536, 1536-1537, 1538, 1539-1540, 1542-1543, and 1544. Are there any... Um, any measures that need to be bumped off the consent agenda? <clears throat> Seeing none, then what I'm going to do is read through. Uh, oh, Council Member Pulley. <clears throat> Council Member Pulley, you're recognized. I just, yeah, if you could pull 1544, I want to be recorded as abstaining on that.
All right, any other measures that need to be bumped off the consent agenda? Uh, Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Mm -hmm. I was asking that 1532. Okay. Okay. Okay, 1532 has also been bumped. All right, so um, I'm gonna read these again, make sure we've got it all, all right? So these are the items that you will be voting on on the consent agenda. Again, let me make sure I've got it. Uh, 1530, RS 2019-1533, 1534, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 42, and 43. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else that needs to be bumped? All right, then I'm gonna read the captions of the uh, measures that are on the consent agenda. Uh, RS 2019-1533 by Virtue and Freeman. It's a resolution accepting a donation from Music City, Inc. to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County for the use and benefit of the Nashville Fire Department. 2019-1534 uh, by O'Connell, Virtue and Syracuse. Resolution approving an application for a local parks and recreation fund grant from the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Parks to develop Capitol View Park. Uh, RS 2019 1535 by Virtue O'Connell and others. Resolution approving an application for a flood mitigation assistance grant from the State of Tennessee, Tennessee Emergency Management Agency to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville, acting by and through the Metro, Metro Water Services Department. Uh, RS 2019 1536, Virtue O'Connell and Hastings, a resolution approving an application for a hazard mitigation grant from the state of Tennessee, Tennessee Emergency Management Agency, to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metro Water Services Department. RS 2019 1537 by O'Connell and Bedney, resolution authorizing restaurant investment properties doing business as Corner Catering Inc to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 151 Fifth Avenue North. Resolution RS 2019-1538 by O'Connell and Bedney. A resolution authorizing Rise Biscuits, Fifth Avenue LLC, doing business as Freddie Bag of Donuts LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 153 Fifth Avenue North. Uh, resolution RS 2019-1539, O'Connell and Bedney. Resolution authorizing Night Vibes LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 207 Third Avenue North. And resolution RS 2019 1540 by O'Connell and Bedney. Resolution authorizing Losers LLC doing business as Losers Most Wanted Bar to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 111 Fourth Avenue South. Resolution RS 2019 1542 by Council Member Lee, resolution approving the election of certain notary publics for Davidson County, and resolution RS 2019-1543 by Potts, Murphy, and others, a resolution recognizing Representative Sherry Jones for her many contributions to the city of Nashville and the state of Tennessee as a member of the Tennessee General Assembly. Okay, <clears throat> I am gonna start with uh, Council Member Vercher, Budget and Finance for Committee Reports. And you can take your coat off to give the um, committee reports. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I was trying to, I couldn't get it on. Um, for RS 2019, 15, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36, budget and finance recommended approval 1240 against. Okay. Um, so who has got Council Member Syracuse's report? Council Member Van Rees. Vice and, Chair Parks in the House. Library. Yeah. All right. <laughs> the uh, uh, committee reported uh, six in favor, zero against on resolution 1534. Thank All you. All right, thank you. Uh, Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. So this is not a public hearing, right? Um, just, well, just you could try to open a public hearing, but there's no one here that probably wants to talk about these. All right. <laughs> so uh, the Planning Commission recommended approval of 1537, 1538, 1539, and 1540. 840 against. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Freeman, you've got uh, public safety. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Public safety looked at RS 2019 1533. Five in favor, zero against to All approve. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, public works. 
Thank you, Mr. President. We had RS 2019-1535, eight in favor, zero against. RS 2019-1536, eight in favor, zero against. RS 2019-1537, eight in favor, zero against. RS 2019-1538, eight in favor, zero against. And then you've got 39 and 40, which have now been 39 and 40 or something. Okay, so um, Mr. Chairman, uh, look at 1539 and 1540. I think they are also on consent. Oh, I think the, they're, sorry, I had a blank page blinding me for a second there, sorry. Uh, yes, 1539, eight in favor, zero against, 1540. Eight in favor, zero against. Um, and in our committee, uh, yeah, I guess I'll wait because I know 1541 is not on consent. It yep. was, it, it stayed on consent in the Public Works Committee, so. All right, we'll come back to you. Uh, Council Member Lee, uh, Rules Committee. Thank you, Mr. M uh, Vice Mayor. Um, the Rules Committee approved resolution 1542, 1543, and 1544 with a vote of seven four and zero against. And sir, with all of the committee reports in, I would like to move that all remaining items on the consent agenda um, be approved. Okay, I have a motion to approve all those items on the consent agenda. Do I have a second? second. Just wanna confirm, uh, I think that we had uh, RS 2019, 1532, and RS 2019, 1544. I think we got reports on those two but those were both bumped off the consent agenda. So uh, all remaining items on the consent agenda, we have a proper motion. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion on any of those? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Um, you adopt the consent agenda. Okay, so now we're gonna go back. If you go to the beginning of the consent agenda and other resolutions, we are now on resolution RS 2018-1508 by Haywood, O'Connell, and others. Uh, this has already been approved by the Public Works Committee. Resolution encouraging National Electric Service, NES, to transition its Roundup donation program from a customer select to a customer remove policy in order to provide additional funding for NES's home energy uplift program and further requesting NES and the Tennessee Valley Authority to match funds resulting from the program. Council Member Haywood. <coughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, in the interest of adequately, adequately addressing community needs, and um, I've looked at um, a lot of the concerns that the community has, and a lot of the community members, they are voicing somewhat of mistrust in the process. So in an effort to increase transparency, in an effort to further educate, and in an effort to increase the communication among all stakeholders, I have decided to uh, defer this to the first week in February. And also in talking to one of my constituents, um, Jason Carney, and talking to the mayor's office and talking to NES, we are planning to have community events to increase community awareness. So to that end, um, I would like to defer until the first week in the first meeting in February. All right, so I have a motion to defer uh, to the first meeting in February. It's been properly seconded. Uh, Council Member Bircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. If we're gonna do community outreach, um, the first meeting in February, and I'll yield to the sponsor, is that enough time for community-wide engagement? Council Member Haywood. It is my, in talking to my constituents and uh, the individuals that are going to help me coordinate these events, um, it is our desire that it will be enough time. But that is to be determined, but that is definitely the, um, the desire. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member Vircher. Uh, we have a motion on the floor to defer to the first meeting in February. It has been properly seconded. Any discussion? Uh, Council Member Hurt. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I too am concerned about the communications to the uh, community. And I'd actually like to see NES put it a part of its uh, notes that go into the um, 
bill each month. And I guess considering what uh, Councilwoman Virtue said, that that would not allow uh, them to do that, I don't think. Uh, but if it is possible, so every uh, constituent can have some clarification and understanding of what the program is uh, intended to do. All right, I'm going to refer that to um, Council Member Haywood. Hold on. Moving, moving forward, if we uh, deem that that is not enough time, we would be more than happy to adjust the time. Councilmember Hardy, any other comments? Well, I, I guess maybe it would be best to um, defer indefinitely and whenever we need to pull it back up, if it's possible for NES to, to uh, indicate and, and, and use that mechanism as a means to educate the community. At right. this time, I would still prefer to defer to the first week in February, and we mm -hmm. will make adjustments as we deem necessary. Okay, right now, I just currently have a, a motion on the floor to defer to the first meeting in February. Okay, uh, Council Member Elrod. So please mark me as abstaining, please. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Just want to go ahead and state on the floor that basically what this resolution does is it actually asks NES to have uh, community outreach, just includes, encourages them to place this within their toolbox of, of things that they can do. We've received a, a very, I think, uh, informative and persuasive letter from the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation today um, and indicating their support for this, which has been on an uh, agendas actually for quite some time. Uh, this mechanism is utilized in some of our peer cities in the state of Tennessee, such as Knoxville and Memphis, and has shown to ha uh, greatly increase those municipalities' participation in home weatherization programs that do benefit the uh, some of the l lower income families that qualify from that in addition to creating green jobs, which I know we all value. So this uh, resolution does not say that we are moving forward with it. It actually encourages Nashville Electric Service to include this in their toolbox and to engage in the public outreach that we're looking for. I mean, if, if we need to defer it another month, that's fine. I think there has been, frankly, uh, I'll just go on record and say there's been a pretty um, active misinformation campaign that has been waged uh, in various ways that has um, generated some concern that that may not necessarily be well-founded and we may be able to allay at least some of that concern. But I just want to make sure that if we do defer this for one month that we sort of have a plan of what's going to happen during that month. Um, otherwise, we will be back here deferring it yet again because that was actually the reason for the deferral, which I think was wise last time. But I just don't want us to keep coming back and have a deferral if we do defer it for a month that we as a council body should have uh, set forth some expectations of what we would like to see in that next month. But largely, the resolution just for the viewing audience actually asks NES to conduct a, um, a ratepayer uh, information campaign even prior to initiating any kind of a, a, an opt-in or opt-out campaign. Um, so so that, that onus still stays on them. But I just want us as a council body, if we do defer it another month, to sort of quickly set what our expectations are of what we're wanting to see within the next month. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member Withers. Uh, Council Member Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Just very quickly, Mr. Jamison, because I think uh, that with the sponsor asking for the deferral, in the event the sponsor comes back and asks to defer it again, I, I try to keep up with our rules, but they get a little strange in committee versus here on the floor, et cetera. Could you just give us an overview of what that would mean in the event the sponsor asks for a deferral again, please. Sure, uh, she's allowed. Uh, if it's a committee-based deferral, the committee gets to do that one time mandatorily, but this is not a committee-based deferral. It's the sponsor requesting it. She could make that request again. Should she do it a third time and it extends beyond 90 days, then when it comes back to the council, there's an automatic bump for one meeting so that the council can reorient itself with the legislation. 
Okay, so just for clarity, this is her first move on the first. So she runs no danger. If she runs out of time and it doesn't work the way she's asking for it to, no. then she's safe on that. Correct. All right, thank you for the clarification. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right, thank you. Um, so I've got Council Member Rosenberg. Previous question. Okay, I got a call for the previous question. Is there a second? <clears throat> All in favor of the previous question indicate by saying aye. Opposed, no. I think the previous question prevails. Uh, so we're on, um, this is a motion to um, defer uh, until the first meeting in February. That's what we're voting on. Again, it's been properly seconded. Um, extensions, they have to go. Okay, so we're gonna have to go on the board. Um, so again, this is just a motion to defer to the first meeting in February. Madam Clerk, if you would open the machines. Everybody voted? So, Madam Clerk, if you would uh, close the machines and take the vote. 32 in favor, one against, and two abstentions. So the vote is 32 yeses, one no, and two abstaining. So the motion to defer uh, until the first meeting in February passes. All right? Thank you. All right. So she may have to bump it after that. We're now on resolution RS 2019-1531 uh, by Council Member Vercher and Bedney. Resolution declaring surplus and approving the disposition of certain parcels of real property in accordance with section 2.24.050G of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Uh, Council Member Vercher. <clears throat> Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended a one meeting deferral, 11 for, zero against on the committee report. All right, Council Member Bedney. The Planning Committee uh, recommended a one million deferral and re refer to the uh, Planning Committee, 10 4 0 against. Okay. So it's a one meeting deferral for both uh, with a re referral back to planning. Okay. That's the committee report, Vice Mayor. I haven't All made right. my motion yet. All right, uh, Council Member Vercher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move for a one meeting deferral with a re referral back to budget and finance and planning, zoning, and historical. Got it. Okay, so I got a one meeting deferral. Motion to uh, defer one meeting with the re referrals back to the committees. Uh, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. There, there were a couple of reasons for deferring this, but one of them was that I had asked um, if there were a process in place to um, allow the community land trust. Um, that we've recently put in place to at least have um, the option to comment on whether any of these might be buildable for um, the, the community land trust, which we hope is a way to provide some permanent, um, reasonably priced housing through different parts of town. And currently there isn't a process in place, so um, there may be some discussion about that in the, in the interim time while we um, discuss this. But larger than this one particular piece of bill, my hope is that we can um, make that be an official part of, of the surplus process. So I support that deferral. All right, thank you, council member. Any other discussion on this? So I've got a motion to uh, defer one meeting with re-referrals back to planning and to budget. Let me make sure I get a proper second. second. Got a second on it. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the one meeting defer with the re-referral say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, that motion is adopted. Thank you, Council Member Vercher. Okay, we are now on resolution 2019-1532. Uh, uh, Again, Council Member Vercher. Resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the claim of Timothy Warren against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $110,000 and reasonable attorney's fees not to exceed $50,000. And that said amounts be paid out of the judgments and losses fund. Council Member Vercher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval, 12 for and zero against, and I move for approval. Okay, so I have a motion to approve. Uh, it's been properly seconded. Uh, Council Member Allen? Nothing, okay. Uh, Council Member Gilmore. 
Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I just wanted to stand quickly. Um, when I had read the analysis um, yesterday, and I was, I was not here, um, and I know we do a lot of these things in committee, but I just had a couple of questions, and I, I guess I would di direct them to Attorney Cooper, to direct them to the Sheriff's Office, just um, in terms of thinking about the victim and what happened to him and the, the two officers that were working at the time that he was um, injured and the fact that they never received a letter of reprimand and just how that would be corrected. Mr. Cooper. Yes, ma'am. Uh, after the incident, there were two um, excessive force charge letters issued to the two um, officers. Uh, one officer, it was determined he did violate policy. Um, he was uh, uh, issued a suspension. However, due to some internal control problems at the time in the um, sheriff's office, that disciplinary action did not get served on the officer within the 10 day period. And so therefore he was um, effectively not disciplined. Um, he, he was demoted um, after that and moved to a different role. Um, the other officer was issued a charge letter, but the use of force committee after reviewing it determined that he had not violated policy. Um, so at this point, no disciplinary action has been taken. Okay, so do we need to, I, m I remember at one time we could send a letter from the council if we, we had further questions before we moved to a resolution of some sort or just, I, I think I still have the concern about a disciplinary action. I understand the part about, that's how I understood it in the analysis, analysis about the internal controls, but it just seemed that it was so severe. Um, if, well, if I understand it correctly, the, the guy had spoken that was going through um, just the check to, to be checked in and he got punched in the face and his ankles got broken, right? So I do, or I would still like to see how we could take actions to say that we support that a disciplinary act, uh, action letter should be sent. Um, well, first we're, we're only settling on behalf of the metropolitan government. We're not settling on behalf of the officers. They were right. sued individually. Right. So that, this doesn't address that. Um, they are also under, um, there, there are criminal charges pending, and that case uh, is set to go to trial at the end of this month. Um, so I think depending on the outcome of that, their, um, the sheriff's office would, would reevaluate um, based on that outcome. Okay, and so then I have one more question, and then I'll take my seat. So what prevents us from taking action as a, a city or the sheriff's department versus letting it be litigated and then making a decision and then we're determining based on the decision that happens whether they find them guilty or not that we should take action. Well, the sheriff is, is res disciplinary action um, for correctional officers is under the purview of the sheriff's office. So the, the council could you know make some kind of recommendation or something, but, but that is um, under his purview. Okay, but I guess I was just still trying to understand his logic for waiting for that, because we still have to, I understand the, the sheriff is responsible, but at the end of the day, it comes out of our monies. We, we have to pay for it, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I just wanted to understand what the logic was for that, for him waiting, or what's the idea? Maybe it's something that I don't understand legally that you would wait versus if you knew that your officers were at fault. Well, the use of force committee determined that one of them did not violate policy. Okay. The other one where they failed to issue the, the um, disciplinary action, they have taken steps to correct that so that that will not happen in the future. And I think they're just kind of waiting for due process to play out through the, the criminal case to determine if there was excessive force. Okay, I appreciate it. Um, and I guess I would just like to say, I think the, to the sheriff's office, to, office that we set the standard. I mean, we have to pay for this. We set the standard and we should not wait for it to be 
litigated to take action, because there's still one, even though one guy was found not responsible, the other one was, he didn't receive a letter, and even though it was some internal control issue, we know that he is responsible for that. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Um, okay. uh, back to council member Vercher. Any other comments? Um, budget and finance yesterday, we discussed uh, this resolution <laughs> extensively. Um, representative from the, the sheriff's office um, uh, articulated to the committee um, the provisions that have been put in place, the policies to ensure that um, an incident such as this does not, does not happen again. Um, and with that, um, I just renew my motion for approval. Okay, all right. Thank you, council member. So we have a motion to approve. It has been properly seconded. Any other discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the resolution is adopted. All right. Uh, we're now on resolution RS 2019-1541. This is by O'Connell and Bedney. Um, it's been approved with conditions by the Planning Commission. Uh, resolution authorizing Harry O. Steakhouse, LLC, doing business as Kid Rock's Big Ass Hockey Talk to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 217 Broadway. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval with a brief explanation. Actually, first, no, I'm sorry. I'd like to request committee reports, please. All right. I'm going to Council Member Bedney for a public hearing report. Vice Mayor, I'm trying to be serious here. So. Thank you. Um, the committee recommended approval 940 against. Thank you, Council Member. Back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Public Works Committee recommended eight in favor, zero against. All right. And, and uh, if, if I have the floor again, I'd like to move approval with a brief, explana a brief explanation. All right. So I got a motion to approve. It's been properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member. Thank you, Mr. President. I would just, I guess I would generally caution, caution colleagues and the general public not to assume. Uh, I'd like to announce the District 19 Christmas party to take place at Mr. Rock's uh, ass establishment here, and I'd uh, just like to renew my motion to approve, please. So I've got a uh, motion to approve. It's been properly seconded. Uh, Council Member Murphy, anything about the uh, Christmas party? I'm going to pass on the Christmas party, but speak about the... You're lost, Council Lady. I, I know. I, I am aware. We in District 24 are not as lucky to have as many aerial encroachments as District 19 has. Um, and speaking of which, uh, I made some comments earlier in planning and wanted to kind of continue and share those with the rest of the council. Um, I think that what I talked about earlier carries over. Um, I grew up here and Nashville downtown was not an area that my parents really wanted me to go. Um, like I said earlier, I'm not sure they still approve of me going downtown that much. but. Um, we've worked very hard as a city to become somewhere that is um, a tourist destination, an it city, um, somewhere that is family friendly. As I mentioned before, one of the selling points of the Opryland sound waves was so that families would come and stay more often. Um, and here we are with something that I understand has First Amendment issues um, when it comes to our ability to restrict what the sign says but I want you to look at the sign. I want you to look at, we can see it on our, on our tablets and things like that. I think we have another slippery slope of when aerial encroachments used to be the historic signs of the honky tonks downtown, and now look how many they are. Pretty much everything that opens downtown has an aerial encroachment. And this one, I feel, crosses the line between good taste, family friendliness, um, and I think what we would like Nashville to portray to people that come and visit us. I think that there are burlesque bars downtown that have classier signs. Um, I mean, I think there are other establishments that, you know, have done a better job at this. And I think that this, if we allow this, what is going to come next? Um, I think we can all use our imagination there. And when it comes to Mr. Rock and where he did perform in their... Um, Christmas parade, if we put our mindset in those cities, do you think that they would allow this type of sign in Leapers Fork or Franklin? 
um, I want us to really consider what do we want Nashville to look like? What do we want when we take our children, grandchildren, and visiting friends and family members downtown to see? What face do we want to put forward for Nashville? And I don't think that this is the Nashville that I would be proud of. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. I have got uh, Council Member Elrod. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Jamieson, I sat in during the planning committee uh, earlier. Could you go through the uh, what we're, uh, as a body, as a governmental entity, how we regulate public spaces um, such as this aerial encroachments like this? Uh, sure. The, the question was generally about First Amendment applications to issues of this nature, and, and First Amendment issues do extend to sign regulation by local governments. Um, they are protected, protected by First Amendment. If a local government decides to issue regulations that would constrain the contents of a sign, um, it has to have a specific governmental interest that it's protecting. It will be reviewed with what courts call strict scrutiny to see if their method of regulating it is narrowly tailored to accomplish just that goal and have no broader effects. So you have to surgically operate and make sure you're not prohibiting other forms of speech. Um, the prohibitions on uh, prurient interests or vulgarity has been deemed to be a legitimate government interest, but it is fraught with peril in defining what is obscene, and the Supreme Court has infamously made that uh, clear. So uh, there are no strictly defined parameters. The, the, the word and image that I believe are of interest in this issue is not on any list of, of prohibited terms. Um, and lastly, I would just add that the planning commissions and historic commissions review and approval of this, that is simply on technical grounds. Does it meet height and size requirements and so forth? It is not content related. Okay, thank you. So um, the, the historic and planning uh, staff commissions uh, review it according to the technical specifications. So um, according to those, they don't look at content. So it's up to, I suppose now, this body to look at the content and, um, and see if something that, that, that looks like this is that we would deem it obscene and vulgar. And that would be the only way that we will be likely be able to um, uh, withstand uh, uh, a lawsuit if, some, if, if the owner of this, uh, if the requester of this aerial encroachment um, were to sue Metro. Is that, am I correct in that? That's generally correct. You're not required to review the content, but if you deem it uh, objectionable based on content, you have to define the public interest that you're protecting. Again, if it's based on obscenity, uh, the, the challenge you will have is that I mean, strolling out here, you'll pass the Wild Beaver Saloon, you'll pass Nudie's Bar, you'll pass other instances where we have not applied the strictures that might be applied to those objecting in this instance. That's not to say you would lose the case, but Mr. Rock or his business affiliates might have a legitimate First Amendment challenge should this not be granted. I've got a joke, I'll keep it to myself. Thank you, Mr. Jameson. <laughs> I think that's probably a good idea. <clears throat> Councilmember Hastings. Call the question. I got a call for the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. We're on the um, motion um, to uh, pass. This is uh, RS 2019 1541. Uh, we're going to have to be on the board. So, um, Madam Clerk, if you would open the machines. Again, we are voting on RS 2019-1541. Okay. Okay, everybody in? Everybody voted? All right, Madam Clerk, close the machines and take the vote. 27 in favor, three against, three abstentions. Okay, we have 27 yeses, three noes, three abstentions. Uh, the uh, resolution passes. All right, thank you.
All right, uh, last one resolution that we have is resolution RS 2019-1544 uh, by Council Member Dow. Uh, this is a resolution requesting that Governor Bill Haslam grant clemency to Centoya Brown. Uh, Council Member Dow. Thank you, committee reports. All right, Council Member Lee. Yes, sir, our committee approved this seven to zero. All right, thank you. Back to you, Council Member. Thank you. With the committee report in, I move for approval. Okay, and got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Uh, discussion, Council Member Pulley. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I appreciate all the work of everybody uh, as it relates to this. Uh, uh, however, I'm going to have to be recorded as abstaining. Uh, it's a very important matter, and I need to be much more familiar with the facts than I've been given the opportunity to become uh, before I can support something like this. So uh, rather than vote no, I would like to abstain. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, any other discussion? Okay, we're going to go back on the board. Um, Council Member Dowell, any further comments before we vote? Okay. I just ask, and I don't want to make belay of the point, but this is a, a non-binding resolution asking just for clemency, to have mercy for her. And I know a lot of you are not familiar with the case. Um, I would encourage you to take a look at it, because one of the issues that this council body has taken up over the last few years is criminal justice reform, youth violence, and with our women caucus sexual trafficking. Back in 1990s, when this occurred, we didn't have a name for some of the phenomena that was happening with our young people, and we do now. Um, this resolution is not to negate the fact that um, Johnny Allen lost his life, but it is to ask for uh, leniency on the sentencing. Uh, if our prison system is set up to provide rehabilitation for those serving, then we need to give them opportunity to rehab. And I encourage you to read up on the case, because if there is such an example of someone that has changed their life and has utilized the prison system to better themselves, I think she is an example of someone that's done so. Um, since this time, we've changed our laws with regard to youth who commit crimes, and we've started to look at it a little bit different. We start to look at adverse childhood experiences and how your background and how drugs and alcohol and your environment play a role in your actions and your mental health. And so I encourage you, because this is not, this is one of the cases, but I think as we go forward, we're going to see more cases like this that come across our desks and happen in our community. And it's important for us to rehab people and get them back into society and, um, and once they're rehabilitated. So uh, with that being said, I just ask for your approval and support and, um, and to familiarize yourself with the case. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I wanted to uh, thank uh, Council Member Dow for bringing this resolution forth. And I did want to share that, um, as she shared, the, the way we think of these issues now, we think of them a lot differently. When this crime happened, the young lady was 16 years old. She was in the bed with a 43-year-old, and there were a lot of issues with that. And they said that she felt that the gentleman was trying to kill her. And um, like we, we think about children, we think about prostitution, sex trading, we have to protect children. We have a lot more information about it now, but just even the scene, and if you think about just the, the difference in age, all the, the different things that come to mind, and just the fact that we know a little bit more than we know, um, then we think of things differently, and we know the issues that women, people of color, people that uh, don't have a lot of access to money, uh, to articulate the ideas, to get rehabilitated, and just how we treat it. So I do ask um, that those of us who can support it, that we can, that we can, and we will, and that we'll, we will protect children, because it is about protecting children. At the time, she was a child. She was a child, and that was a grown man, and she was being sex trafficked. And someone said it best earlier today. They said it could be our children, it could be your mother, it could be your sister, and uh, we just know that the business is a a billion dollar business across the world. And we just have to wake up and be honest and protect children. And that's what this is about. So I want to thank uh, Council Member Dow for doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Haywood. I just want to echo everything that has already been articulated. And um, I would just like to stand in support of this resolution. I just can't even overstate how much I support it. I have followed this case very closely, 
And I just really feel like that in terms of the community and value added, she will definitely be more of an asset to this community as a woman that has been freed as opposed to a woman that remains locked up for the rest of her life, possibly. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Hart. Thank you. I, too, stand in support, and uh, I echo what has been said, but also it could be me as that same person, as opposed to a mother or a daughter. It could have been me. And uh, I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but there are people who, in the chamber that has come to support this. Is it appropriate for them to stand so we can see the visual uh, as some type of um, indication of what this community uh, believes and stands for? Any objection from anybody in the, what I would ask is if you stand, I, I, we try not to have lots of uh, uh, clapping. But uh, if there's no objection, uh, then Council uh, Member uh, Hurt, we will uh, allow for people to stand and show their support. All right. All right. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Council Member Hurt, any other comments? No, thank you very much, and thank you all for coming and uh, showing your support. All right. Council Member Scott Davis. As one of the many men in this chamber that has a daughter, it's very important that as men, and all the men I know in this chamber that have daughters are very protective. And our daughters can be anything. They're most, at least mine is smarter than me and very bright, very precious, has all the rights of any man or any woman in this world. But this is particularly hard for me because this young lady, when I look at them, I look at her, her reminds me of my child. And as men, we could do more. We do a lot with our own personal children and the children in our families. But I just want to encourage every man in this room do a little bit more. And even if you don't have a daughter, you know, I'm sure there's a relative of yours you know, or a child in your community that you can safely prevent things like this to happen. And I just want to encourage everybody because there's one way to get on my bad side is you messing my child. And so I feel for this family and I feel for this young lady and I want her to be free. So if Governor Haslam, I know you're probably not listening to little old me, or even the next governor, uh, Mr. Lee, please let her go. She served her time. She's, it was an unfortunate circumstance. You know, and this, and Mr. Shulman, please forgive me. If that were my baby, I would have been the one locked up for doing something that I can't mention on this floor to someone victimizing my child. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Bircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I know many in the chamber, they have a, a sentiment as it relates to, to these non-bonding um, resolutions. Um, but I would like to state this one is, is a little more different than what we, what we usually do. Um, this one is more dire. This one is more of a, a plea than a, um, a ceremonial request. Um, and I would encourage my colleagues um, if they would support um, this resolution. I can't, um, and I don't want to belabor the facts that Councilwoman Dow has already articulated as it relates to um, the sentencing um, of Ms. Brown. Um, it's just a tragedy. And if this is a way that we can use our voice um, to, to convey that plea, um, your vote tonight will demonstrate such. So I ask you to support the resolution. Thank you, Council Member. Seeing nobody else in the queue, we are um, ready to vote. We're on the board. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you will open the machines, we are voting on Resolution RS 2019 1544.
Madam Clerk, all looks like all the votes are in. If you will um, close the machines and tally the vote. 32 in favor with two abstentions. Okay, so we have 32 yeses, uh, zero noes, two abstentions. Uh, the resolution passes. Okay. All right, so we are ready to move on to bills on first reading. Uh, if there is no objection, we'll consider all ordinances on first reading. Uh, in one vote at this time, <clears throat> uh, Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, typically, we do pass, uh, you know, bills on the first reading. However, I would like to propose uh, this time to uh, take BL 2019's 14.74 off the consent agenda. Tell me again, 14. Uh, 2019, 1474. 1474. Okay. Do we need a motion or we just bump it? Okay. So, um, uh, BL 2019, 1474 is bumped from uh, uh, the um, regular way we do first um, introductions and first readings. So, we'll take up that matter separately. Uh, Council Member Glover? We'll discuss it when you're ready. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so we are on uh, bills on first reading. We take those together. The only bill that has been bumped off that um, first reading is uh, Bill 2019-1474. Do I have a motion to adopt all other remaining bills on first reading? I got a proper motion, proper second. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. So we are now on uh, specifically on first reading BL 2019-1474. That's by Council Member Glover. Ordinance amending section 13.08.040 of the Metropolitan Code pertaining to the sale of various items by vendors to occupants of vehicles within the public right of way. Council Member Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, you know, I had a bill similar when this uh, session first started, and I said, and I, I let it go because uh, everybody told me there was no problem with it, there was no safety issues, there was none of those kind of things that had occurred. We've had two deaths uh, over the last three months, specifically, and that's one thing I'm trying to deal with here. Uh, and one of those deaths actually occurred in my district, uh, where somebody stepped out and uh, got run over by a car. And so there was a tragedy for that family. There was a tragedy for the family uh, that hit the individual. And then there was another death. I spoke to a record service today the, this is a, a regular occurrence of damage that occurs. Now, I don't mind us talking through how this works. I mean, if we're going to knock it down today, that's fine. I'm not going to let it go. I'm going to keep bringing it back because, and I'm also working at the state on this because this has become an issue that needs to be discussed and we need to find a solution. So, you want to knock it down tonight? Knock yourselves out. I'm going to be bringing it back. If I need to change the language a little bit, that's fine. But rest assured, I'm not letting this go because there are people in my district who are asking me to please push this back. And I did what I said I would do. If, in fact, nobody was hurt, none of this stuff occurred, then I would leave it alone. But two deaths are deaths. Last time I checked, that's pretty hurtful. And so, therefore, I would ask us to move it uh, through here. Let's get it in a committee. We'll talk about language. Uh, we'll talk about what we'd had before, what I'd filed before, versus what the difference is on this. There are some substan uh, substantial differences, I believe. And then we can also talk about the panhandling and some of the other issues that are being brought up. So with that, I would just ask us to move it through as normal. Let's get it in a committee and we'll talk about it. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, yes, we did uh, discuss a similar bill uh, three years ago. That was Bill 2015-32. Uh, at the Public Works Committee, uh, we had six months of discussion. We did meet with a newspaper article a vendor, and we did meet with MMPD representative. And with safety is, yes, indeed, concern, perhaps. However, the way bill is written, 
is effectively uh, put micro vendor out of uh, business because this uh, homelessness community is specifically uh, rely on this type of micro business. So by introducing uh, this bill the way it is written, it's effectively uh, threaten their livelihood. I think it's ingenious uh, to just present the bill that effectively kill uh, those uh, type of uh, micro business owner. So I would ask the sponsor of the bill, if we were to discuss over this uh, one portion of the bill, I would like to discuss holistically how we as a city a government uh, address to effectively uh, help uh, those uh, community. Without those solution, I uh, just address one side of the uh, uh, issue is not fair to the community. So those reasons, I oppose this bill. So I move to uh, disapprove this bill uh, tonight. All right, uh, so let me go back. Uh, Councilmember Glover, um, I think, um, did you actually make a motion on this bill to move it on? So I'm gonna go to you, Councilmember Glover. Yes, Vice Mayor, I ask us to pass it tonight on first reading. Uh, Mr. Jameson, uh, are we allowed to amend this on second reading? Yes, sir. After we go through committee and we talk, uh, because everybody's got their ideas on language, et cetera, tonight. Um, and whether you agree with it or you don't agree with it, that's fine. But for us to go ahead and abandon the conversation after we clearly have documentation now that injury and death has occurred with these instances, then I think we're short-sighting ourselves. And I'm not trying to be tacky, but I'm not, I'm not gonna let it go. I'm gonna keep bringing it back. I'm gonna work with the state because we do have an issue that needs to be dealt with, and we can either talk about it or if we're gonna kill it right now, that's fine, I'll, I'll keep bringing it back. I'll go to the state and do what I need to do there uh, to deal with an issue that is an issue. And it's not just the individuals that are out, quote, selling a paper. This, is, this goes way beyond that. And so therefore, we also have to look out for the public safety of the individuals driving legally in their cars. So again, I, I think if it can be amended after we bring it through committee uh, and we kind of sit, uh, sit down and hone in on the language, that's fine. I think we should be able to get to that point. So as long as I know we can be, uh, it can be amended and I think Mr. Jamison has said that it can be, then I would ask us to approve this. On first reading tonight, let's get it into committee. Thank you. All right, so let me um, explain kind of where we are. So um, Council Member Glover, you wanted to proceed with the bill, but you didn't officially make the motion to approve. All right. Hold on, let me get you, let me get you back on the microphone. All right, sorry, yes, I move to approve the bill. All right, so uh, what I've got is, uh, the, before you move to approve, I got a motion to disapprove from Council Member Johnson. So the proper order of things should be for me to take the first motion that was made, which would be a motion to disapprove, okay? So it, it comes out in the same way, but the, the actual motion that first appeared was a motion to disapprove this matter, correct? So I gotta start there first. So I've got a motion to disapprove. Do I have a second on Council Member Johnson's motion to disapprove? So that's been properly seconded. So we're gonna continue with discussion, but the thing that's in front of us right now on this matter is a motion to disapprove uh, this particular measure, all right? So um, I'm gonna go to Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, so in looking through this bill, I think the and I support the motion to disapprove, and I would ask colleagues to support that motion as well. When we first took this bill up, it was in the 2015-32. Uh, this was in the first month of our term that it came to this body. And as Councilmember Johnson indicated, uh, it, was talk it was referred to a committee. It went through on first vote. It was talked about for months. And then the sponsor deferred it indefinitely. The language that was contained in 2015-32 the same section is open, the same subsection is open, and the, and the 
actual change in the language of that subsection in this bill that we're taking up right now changes a word from mobile to transportation and then includes the words in the public right of way. There is no question what this bill would affect. This bill would absolutely and specifically affect vendors of the contributor. I know this because I've been emailing with the executive director of the contributor over the last week. She has stated that she had not had communication about this bill. And in fact, the deaths that are being referred to are deaths that did not occur for vendors. They occurred for folks who were coming out into the public right of way and straight solicitation or panhandling or whatever you want to call, which is not, is explicitly not addressed in this bill. In fact, this bill explicitly addresses selling and distributing. It talks about people who are buying or compensating. This is very specifically and narrowly tailored to affect vendors like the contributor. And I think we are all in this body familiar with the work that the newspaper has done. They have recently restructured and have gone back to a model that made them the best selling homeless contributing newspaper in the entire country. And to use the deaths of a couple of people to try to get to a point that was tried to be made four years ago, and then to brazenly say that if this doesn't pass, that there'll be an effort to preempt the efforts this body, which probably the majority of us have experienced over the time of our term here, I think quite frankly, is just against the oath of office that we take. So under that, I would very much support the disapproval motion of this bill, and I would, um, in fact, ask for a roll call vote on that. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Mendez. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I was uh, going to let this go on, on first, even though I'm like horribly opposed to it. Uh, but now that it's up, um, I, I'll need to vote yes in favor of the motion to disapprove. Um, there are a lot of existing laws, and if our concern is about the um, uh, people who are panhandling, um, we could uh, outlaw jaywalking. Um, don't get in the street outside of a crosswalk, and that would address the concern. I assume we already have that law on the books. This is clearly uh, uh, aimed at the street vendor newspapers, and uh, it's not appropriate. Uh, one thing that my colleagues haven't mentioned yet, because I don't want to duplicate their comments, is when we had the six months of work on this in 2015 and maybe early 2016, um, the, the position of the representatives of the police department who participated in the um, uh, committee hearings was that they weren't really particularly interested in handing out tickets for street vending um, because it uh, creates court dates and fines and exacerbates the underlying problem of homelessness rather than helping. And so um, aside from the fact that we already have laws on the books to keep people out of the streets outside of crosswalks, aside from the fact that this seems blatantly aimed at uh, street vending newspapers that are permitted, like the contributor, um, uh, we're not going to do any good based on what we heard a couple years ago from MNPD because they, as we know, don't have resources to go around enforcing a new law to outlaw handing things through car windows. Um, you know, I, I was uh, a lot more zen about um, uh, just beating this on, on second reading or third if necessary before tonight, but with the, the promise of getting repeated um, legislation on this, frankly, I say that we should uh, take up that challenge. And uh, until it comes in a benign fashion going after um, people being in the street outside of a crosswalk who don't have a permit, um, to sell a newspaper from the curb, then let's go ahead and just uh, beat this legislation and beat whatever attempts come next on the same issue. Um, this is aimed at the contributor, um, and if that's poor draftsmanship, then try again. So I'm, I'm going to be in favor of the motion to disapprove tonight. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm still kind of blown away that one of our members said that if he didn't like what he did, what we do tonight, that he would go to people from outside Nashville to get them to overturn the will of the people here. Um, that's disturbing. Um, I'll also add, I don't know what happened in the incident out in the sponsor's district, but I know the second death was the result of somebody walking down the middle of Bradley Parkway and not selling newspapers at the time. That was a completely separate incident. Um, I'll note that it's already illegal to obstruct the right of way to go out into traffic and also that by outlawing the contributor, we'll be making panhandling 
more common, which I think is, is uh, not the direction that we need to go. So I'm looking forward to voting yes on disapproving this tonight and next meeting and the meeting after that. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councilmember Rosenberg. Uh, Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I will say I acknowledge the, the safety issues that the sponsor brings to the table. Uh, we've heard a couple of points on that, but I also want to take a minute just to thank uh, my colleagues who came out on December 15th, just a few weeks ago, uh, to recognize the 127 people that died homeless or you know, generally from exposure. A handful of those had, had recently moved into housing but had recently been homeless. It's the largest number of people we've memorialized uh, since that service began more than a decade ago. We want to talk about a lack of safety. That's your lack of safety. 127 people dying on our streets exposed uh, because they don't have the resources of the basic necessities to keep themselves quite literally safe uh, from death by exposure. Uh, I will be voting like Councilman Rosenberg uh, against this tonight and every other time it comes up, no matter what form it takes. This is not only uh, an essential economic liberty, uh, it is an essential form of micro enterprise. It's the very spirit, uh, the people that generally tend to say, hey, why don't these people work themselves into better opportunities? Uh, try to espouse as, as fundamental to our process, and I, I think this uh, needs to go away for the second time and ideally uh, never return. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Scott Davis. As much as it warms my heart, to see all my colleagues here stand up for print journalism. I just have a question. I'm not for getting rid of the contributor in any form or fashion. Let's make that clear, okay? And if we do go for a vote tonight, you know what I mean? It's, it'll be very, very difficult for me to go with the sponsor. But I can't sit here and not remind us that Councilman Glover is a member of this body. He was duly elected by his constituents. Some, a lot of us got calls from the media and other people in support, opposition, or just because it was a slow news day and it was excitement for some reason on someone else's end. Now, we're not, as a body, we're not, we're not none of us are saying we mourn the deaths of those individuals. However, though, very rarely that we've shut stuff down on first reading, whether we agree or disagree. And I want to be clear on something, and I'm not trying to make a joke, okay? Um, and, and Mr. Jameson, um, I don't know, and I apologize if I'm wrong here, um, but were you on a council when a member brought a, and I'm not comparing, I'm not disparaging my good colleague, behind me here, but we've had legislation. I don't think anybody agreed with the UFO landing pad. Is that correct, sir? Uh, there was one sponsor member that did, but not uh, anybody else. <clears throat> now, now, I'm not comparing that, but there was a bill. And, 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 um, and I'm gonna caution us here to treat your fellow member the same courtesy, even if, I mean, we can have at it on next reading committees, and like before, we shot it down, okay? But I caution, just like, I would say this for any member in the body, okay? I mean, and I may not like your bill or won't vote for it, but I'm gonna afford you that courtesy that we do to so many other people, you know, of not killing things. I know what it's like for people to try to kill a bill on first reading. And you know what happened? It passed when it got to the public. You know? And I know how that feels. And so I'm going to afford him that same courtesy, even though he didn't agree with my legislation. And he told me up front, but he came to a lot of the meetings when we had the public here, and we invited Gideon's Army and all the COB folks here. Mr. Glover was here, he listened and asked great questions. 
So we need to give him that same courtesy. And sometimes I get really tired of us. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean sometimes when we, when, we, when we look at some of the bills, he's bringing real bills that his constituents have concerns over. You know, even though some of you may not agree with it, I'm encouraging you. I mean, and I, and I love the I want, I was raised by people in print journalism. You know that. And I don't agree with the bill, but come on. You know, I mean, we got to at least let it get the, get, do the normal process. Let's get a committee. Are we afraid to debate the hard bills? I know we're not. You know, majority of you are, are in this chamber, know how to do this, and it's probably not going to pass. But that's how, why the state interferes a lot, because we don't even give people a fair process sometimes. So I'm encouraging you, you know, even though I'm not in support, to allow this to get the first read. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Council Member, Council Member Anthony Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I won't repeat what has been said. I am also normally not for pulling things on first, but since we did and since I also um, really disagree with the bill, I think we're here and we should go ahead and move forward and uh, vote yes to disapprove. Um, I think maybe, uh, I, th I think this is a bad bill, first of all. It kind of comes back every couple of years, sort of a whack-a-mole bill. Um, I think the best method uh, as far as the safety discussion is maybe bring that to obviously Public Works or one of your ad hoc committees if any of those are related, but just bring it to a committee where we can just have general discussions. But uh, it didn't work in this form already, and I think we need to move on from this. Let's go ahead and vote yes to disapprove this. Um, let's not hurt the contributor um, in any way. It's been such a positive force in Nashville, so thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Bedney. Um, I usually, I, I, first of all, I wish uh, Council Lady Johnson will withdraw this and let it go to second reading, but being that we are discussing on first, uh, I want to explain why I was supported and vote against uh, Council Member Glover's legislation. Uh, I was, I had just read uh, the legislation coming up and I was driving home on Orange Road and there were pe pe people working walking on the shoulder. So, uh, because there's no sidewalk on Orangeville Road. Uh, and then I started thinking, how many things can we do to save people from that? Are we going to make it illegal for people to walk on the shoulder? It's already illegal. Are we going to send the police to do that? Are we going to start stopping people that are uh, checking their phone on their, on their car as they're driving? There are so many things that we could do to save lives. Uh, but is that the role that we need to look at when we are have a stretch police that is uh, trying to help us keep the city safe. Uh, we just saw the report from uh, the people that told us how the police uh, uh, concentrates their efforts in, in uh, and, and we saw that there are some issues that don't really have to do with quality of life, but uh, maybe uh, preventing a potential thing. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, I'm rambling a little bit because I uh, am uncomfortable uh, voting to kill the legislation on first reading, I think we should let it go through the process. Um, there's no way that I will ever vote for this on second or third reading, so I guess I'm voting no on first. Um, I just think uh, that that is just it's just the wrong thing to do. It's it's not because of the contributor. It's it's just the idea that. We should really be looking at why somebody end up being homeless and, and try to solve that problem instead of dealing with the symptom, which is a person trying to uh, survive in, in, a, in a situation that they don't have any, any way to move forward. So let's just work at solving the problems instead of uh, trying to penalize people. By the way, uh, can I ask a question to Mr. Jamison? Sure. Mr. Jamison, somebody violates this legislation, what could be the penalty? Before I answer, I would caution that we have not prepared the analysis on this legislation, which you'll get in, in the next week. But this would presumably be subject to the standard penalties that apply throughout the code, a $50 fine, et cetera. Somebody could end up in jail, for example? Probably not, but at least a $50 fine. So it will end up uh, having a fine of $50? A, a fine, yes. All right. So instead of helping that person, sorry, I'm not debating with you, but it will end up Instead of helping that person, it will uh, push that person further into debt or on a tough spot. So, uh, Council Lady Johnson, I hope you withdraw this, but if you don't, I'm going to vote for it. Thanks. Right. Thank you, Council Member. 
Uh, I am now at uh, Councilmember Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I, like many of you, don't often like to pull things on first. Um, I also have a district uh, which I share a boundary with, in particular with Councilmember Scott Davis, where um, we have an already large and growing uh, sort of tent city population that has nowhere else to go. Uh, and with some evictions and things of that nature, uh, that population is increasingly moving to the street. Um, we do have uh, lots of individuals along Main Street, James Robertson, that um, unfortunately, um, you know, bad things happen to and among each other. I think we as a city need to encourage any positive uh, action that can be taken to support folks to get themselves into shelter. Um, and with regard to the matter of courtesy, uh, I think that, um, it, uh, I, I think that number one, council members can't speak about courtesy if we're also threatening one another to go to the state for preemption, number one. Um, I, I, I think that courtesy goes away at that point. But number two, uh, what does this say to the most vulnerable in our city who are homeless, uh, to our students at MNPS who are homeless? What does it say to folks who are on the verge of homelessness uh, and, and those numbers are growing every day? We need to do whatever we can to help people. And sometimes just sending a message that says that we are willing to consider penalizing, fining, or jailing you for trying to support yourself to get yourself off the street and to even just overnight housing, I think that message that it sends is anything but courteous. And so uh, as the council member who represents Main Street and James Robertson, where a lot of that really, really is a problem, where we really do have a lot of folks crossing the street in an unsafe manner, not necessarily that they're selling anything, uh, but we have a, a large number of pedestrian strikes and deaths at Gallatin and Eastland. I mean, we have a lot of those issues. If we're gonna address the safety issue of pedestrians in the street, whether it be through lighting, safer intersections, lowering speed limits, any of those things, that's a great conversation to have. But what this conversation is, is we're gonna take the people who need our help the most and say that we're gonna penalize you, and, um, and that is, that's just the wrong thing to do. And so in this, in this case, in this rare case for a first reading, um, I'm, I'm with my colleagues that I'm in favor of voting with Councilmember Johnson to disapprove this bill on first reading tonight. Thank you, Councilmember. Uh, Councilmember Glover. Let me make sure I'm real clear. Uh, I've already been talking to the state because in my district, I've got a couple of state roads that uh, are clearly affected with this. Now, everybody seems to know what my thinking is on what I'm doing and who I'm trying to talk to in this bill. You can believe me or you don't, doesn't make any difference. I'm telling you, public safety is what I've got in mind with this. Uh, I had somebody ask me, well, what about some of the other issues? I said, well, when we get in committee, we can, we'll certainly look in a, a, and expand that, but apparently we're, we're not gonna go that route. Okay, so it's not a situation of an idle threat or anything else. I've already been talking to the state because I do get regular complaints from my constituents whom I I'm elected and whom I took an oath to protect. And so therefore, if we wanna kill it, that's fine. I'm not letting it go because just because we kill it here doesn't make the problem go away. And if we're not going to sit down and deal with it, then we've got to find somebody who will, because it is an issue. It is a public safety issue. And if we don't like the way this is written, that's fine. That's what we have committees for, is to talk it through and hopefully debate it. Again, I'm going to emphasize, 2015, I deferred indefinitely because uh, one of the major arguments was there had been no, no, no accidents, no nothing. I've had a death in my district now. I've had people in my district ask me to bring it back. I'm doing what my district asked me to do. So with that in mind, vote it however you want to. It's not idle. I've already been talking to the state on this issue because it goes way beyond just my district. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I do apologize for my colleagues to make you all uncomfortable just uh, by bringing 
the first bill off the consent agenda. I would not do that regularly if this bill was uh, discussed three years ago intensively. I will not do that if this bill will effectively uh, shut off microbusiness successfully run by homeless community. Because this is the only business they are helping their livelihood. By deferring, yes, we could extend our courtesy and put up, you know, postpone two weeks. But two weeks, what kind of agony we're gonna put them through? Their livelihood is in risk. For that reason, I am asking for you to disapprove tonight. If a Councilman Glover's really concerned about the safety, he can rewrite a different bill and reintroduce a next time, not risking the homeless community. I would encourage Councilman Glover to do so rather than going through and amend it at the second reading. So I ask uh, my colleague to support this time as maybe, you know, I'm comfortable as you are, but I ask you to disapprove uh, for the sake of most vulnerable uh, community. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Elrod. Previous question. Okay, we've got a call for the previous question. Is there a second? Properly seconded. We're on the previous question vote. All in favor of the previous question, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt, we're on the vote. Now, before we get to the, before we open the machines, we're gonna go to the machine vote. I need to turn to Mr. Jameson. What we've got procedurally is a motion to disapprove. Mr. Jameson. So there, there's technically not a, a, a motion to disapprove. We vote in the affirmative. So you would construe this as, as we all do with all bills, as a yes means adoption of Councilman Glover's bill. If you're in favor of Councilman Glover's bill, that is a yes vote. A no vote, just a standard procedure as we do with all other ordinances, a no vote is an opposition to adoption. Councilman Sledge moved to have this on the board. If there are three seconds, Rule 38 would have that. All right, so we're gonna go on the board, but let's, let's be clear. So um, obviously we've been t discussing a motion to disapprove, but for purposes of the vote, we're actually voting on um, the, um, the, bill, the bill itself, okay? Is that clear? So we are on BL 2019-1474. So it, it's a straight up vote on the bill. If you want to pass it on first consideration, you would vote yes. If you do not want to pass it on first consideration, you vote no. Correct. Okay, um, I'm going to the clerk who has a question. Okay. So, so do we need to vote on Councilman Glover's motion to approve then and not Councilman Johnson's motion, motion to disapprove? Mr. Jameson? They're essentially construed as the same. Councilman Glover did not make the motion explicit, but there is there is technically no such thing as a motion to disapprove. It's just construed as a motion to approve that she will vote no on, presumably. A no vote is against Councilman Glover's bill. A yes vote, just as with all other ordinances, is a vote in, a yes vote is in support of adoption. So basically, if we understand this correctly, <coughs> it's basically, it's an approval, you're voting as if, if you want to approve, it's like a motion to approve, yeah. you would be voting yes on this measure when it comes up for a vote on the board. If you are against it, then you would vote no. So you would be basically, uh, the one, another way to describe it is, because of the way the technicalities, if you want to support um, Council Member Glover's move, um, efforts to pass the bill on to second, you would vote yes. If you wanted to support what Council Member Johnson is in terms of a disapproved, you would vote no, right? So obviously this is important. Council Member Virtue, did you have a, a question? Vice Mayor, you, you just you just clarified. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that we that we have that clarity in, in what we're voting. So a yes is basically saying we want the bill to to proceed through the process, committee discussion, and so forth. Um, a no vote basically states um, the, uh, the the bill doesn't proceed any further. 
That's correct. Okay. Any other discussion? I know that got complicated, um, but what we want to do is make sure we all understand what we're voting on. So again, if you want, um, if you want Councilman Glover's bill to move pass first, to pass on first reading, and go on to second, you would vote yes. If you are against it moving and you want to stop the bill on first reading, you would vote no. Any other questions before we vote? All right, Madam Clerk, open the machine. Looks like everybody's in. Uh, Madam Clerk, close the machines and tally the vote. Five in favor, 24 against, five abstentions. Okay, so um, uh, five yeses, 24 noes, five abstentions, four not voting. So um, the motion to pass fails. Okay, so the bill uh, is killed on first reading. Correct. Right? Correct. Okay. All right. Um, we are now on to uh, bills on second reading. All right, first bill up is Bill 2018-1439 by Council Member Sledge. This is an ordinance amending section 2.149.040 of the Metropolitan Code of Law, so authorize the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission to rescind grant contracts and collect funds previously allocated to organizations that fail to execute contractual obligations in a timely manner. Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. All right. Uh, Council Member Mendes, uh, ad hoc affordable housing. We did not have a quorum, so no action taken by the committee. All right. Council Member Vercher, uh, budget and finance. Thank you, Vice Mayor. At the request of the sponsor, Budget and Finance recommended a two-meeting deferral, 12-4-0 against. All right, and Council Member Withers, uh, personnel. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. At the request of the sponsor, personnel voted uh, for a two-meeting deferral, three in favor, zero against. All right, Council Member Sledge. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for a two-meeting deferral with a very brief explanation. All right, I got a motion to defer for two meetings, uh, properly seconded. Uh, back to you, Council Member. Uh, so thank you, colleagues, for entertaining this uh, deferral. So this, this bill came out from conversations that the Housing Trust Fund Commission is having about awards that have been made but have not been acted upon. And so uh, I took the initiative to create a piece of legislation so that we could discuss it at our January meeting, which we will be doing. Um, and then I can come back to you with a report from that Housing Trust Fund Commission. It's my intention um, to not only have this, but also bills, companion bills um, based out of those conversations with the Housing Trust Fund Commission that will hopefully um, clear some hurdles for our nonprofit uh, affordable housing developers uh, when it comes to the permitting process and other issues that were taken up in the commission. So with that, uh, I would just renew my motion for a two-meeting deferral. All right. Um, we have a motion on the floor for a two-meeting deferral. Uh, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the um, motion to defer for two meetings say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion is adopted. BL 2018-1440 by O'Connell, an ordinance amending section 2.08.140 of the Metropolitan Code pertaining to dance permits and the mer permitted hours of beer, beer sales and delivery. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to request committee reports, please. All right. Uh, Council Member Freeman, public safety. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Public safety, look at... BL 2018 1440 uh, and voted five in favor, zero against. To approve. All right, thank you, Council Member. Back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Uh, Public Works approved, I believe, eight. Yes, eight in favor, zero against. Is that on there? Okay. Um, all right, and what do you want to do? I think I need traffic, parking, transportation. No, never mind. I'm ahead of myself. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong bill. Um, <laughs> uh, I've got, I'd like to move approval with a brief explanation. Please. All right, so I have a motion to approve, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Uh, this one actually was just uh, 
it was it was staff led. Uh, some of you might remember Councilman Rosenberg's heroic effort to el eliminate dance permits uh, earlier in this term, and this is just uh, partially cleanup related to that effort. Uh, noticed by uh, staff of the beer board as well as um, things that they have observed through the permitting process uh, related to hours of delivery. So this this was basically a cleanup bill uh, recommended by beer board staff um, that we worked on with the council office. So I would like to renew my motion to approve, please. All right, uh, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just have a, a question about um, it, if this is at all affects how long establishments that sell beer can be open. I mean, I, I know that there was some other stuff that happened by the state earlier that enabled something. So this doesn't necessarily extend hours of operation. No. Mr. Jamison. Okay, it thank does you. Not. Okay. All right, uh, we're back on a motion to pass on second reading. We're on 2018-1440. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt 1440 on second reading. Uh, BL 2018-1441 by Council Member Elrod. Uh, ordinance amending chapters 12.62 and 12.84 in Title 12 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws regarding shared urban mobility devices. Council Member Elrod. Media reports, please. All right. I got public safety, which is Council Member Freeman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. We looked at 1441 and... At the request of the sponsor, we deferred one meeting as substituted. Five in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, Public Works. All right, this, catching up to myself now, we were eight in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Uh, Council Member Hager, Traffic and Parking. Traffic and Parking, um, this bill 1441. Mm -hmm. The uh, proposed substitute was passed three, four, one abstention, then we also moved as substituted to defer it, one meeting, four, four, zero against. Okay, thank you. Uh, back to council member Elrod. Thank you, Mr. President. I would move uh, the substitute um, with a, and uh, make sure I have had this correct name for it. I, my intention is to adopt the substitute and defer it one meeting and re-referring to public safety, public works and traffic and parking. All right, so uh, at this point, let's move the substitute uh, properly seconded. Do you have an explanation of the substitute? Yes, sir, and I'll try to be quick. Um, as the uh, pilot project for SUMDs, aka scooters, is going along, um, we're trying to make some tweaks as uh, we uh, deal with them as a city. As substituted, this ordinance um, does four things. One, it puts in a soft cap of powered SUMDs. Uh, my intention is to, uh, or ex excuse me, operators that um, that offer for rent uh, scooters. Uh, we may need to tweak that a little bit so that we don't get into um, e-bikes, so I'll be working on that in the next two weeks. Um, it limits it to the number of operators to four. Uh, beyond that, they can apply to the Transportation Licensing Commission, and the commission can decide whether or not to um, issue another permit for another, uh, for more operators. Currently, right now, there are five that are approved, Bird, Lime, uh, they are on the streets. Lift is, is going to be uh, as lift, jump, and spin have also been approved for a total of five, and those will be hitting the streets soon. Under the ordinance, um, any the um, fifth one that came in, um, they will have their permit uh, essentially revoked, and they can but they can apply to the uh, commission uh, to be reinstated. And uh, Mr. James's analysis, I'll deal with. Uh, you know, there are two issues basically with Mr. James's analysis with the with the ordinance. One of them is regarding due process and the revocation of this permit. Uh, there is a clause in the original scooter regulations that they have to abide by anyone that receives a permit has to abide by uh, future ordinances passed by this council and this ordinance um, would be one of those so I think we should be fine with that. Um, the uh, procedure of going before the commission is one that is similar to how they approve additional taxi cabs or pedal taverns, so it's something that the commission is used to. And the reason for uh, approaching this um, in this way is uh, with additional companies coming here, uh, as we work through the issues uh, dealing with them, and we have public safety for scooters being ridden on sidewalks, on streets, uh, folks learning where they can ride them, where they can't, uh, parking on sidewalks. 
And uh, for me, it's a public safety issue that as we as a city start to, as a government, um, deal with regulating them and integrating them into, his, into the city, but also as uh, citizens and uh, those that are sharing our streets and sidewalks and bike lanes, um, hopefully adapting to them and trying to make these work as a new and alternative transportation option. Um, two, uh, three other uh, smaller things that it does. One is currently in the scooter ordinance. Uh, there is, for any violation, it's a $25 fine to the company. As for any violation, um, it is prohibited currently for uh, those that are under 18 to ride a uh, scooter or to rent one, but uh, through media reports um, and anecdotic uh, evidence, uh, though there are folks under 18 that are riding them, and this would just put in a uh, traffic uh, violation that if you're under 18 and caught on a scooter, a Metro police officer can write you a ticket and you ha and um, just as uh, other tickets and they have to take care of it that way. Um, a couple other things. One, it clarifies something that came up that uh, for any scooter company, or excuse me, any SUMD company as they have an increase in their fleet from uh, 500 to 750 and then to 1,000, that they have to um, meet the criteria that's in the ordinance, um, that they have to show that they're being utilized and that they aren't over a certain threshold of violations. There was some ambigu 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 ambiguity, some confusion. <laughs> ambiguity. Thank you, ma'am. Um, <laughs> some ambiguity, pardon me. Uh, um, there was some confusion and ambiguity about that with uh, some of the operators, so that clears that up. Um, and four, there is already a provision that there can't be a certain number of scooters within a square mile. The, this ordinance would keep that in place. However, the commission will be able to tweak that um, with additional companies coming into town. I think that may be something we'll look at or need to look at. So uh, I would move, uh, this, I renew my motion, is that correct? Yeah, so uh, what you've got in front of you is a motion to um, approve the substitute. Yes, sir. Okay, so we have a motion to approve the substitute, properly seconded. Any discussion on the substitute? Uh, Council Member Sledge. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to be marked as abstaining on this. All right, so on the board. Yep. Yeah. All right, so uh, Council Member Henderson. I would also like to be marked as abstaining on okay. the substitute, please. All right, Council Member Vercher. I need to be marked as abstaining also. All right, Councilmember Glover. Can we just request a machine vote, please? Yeah, we're gonna go on the machine. All right, so this is just on the substitute. Uh, Councilmember Glover, uh, Councilmember Henderson, any other comments? Good, okay. All right, so um, we are on a motion to approve the substitute, uh, and then it's my understanding if it is approved, at some point, you're going to we're going to come back to you, Council Member Elrod, for a motion to defer. It's just to get the substitute in the proper place. All right. So we're going to go on the board. This is a motion to approve the substitute. We are on 2018-1441. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you would open the machines. majority vote. We have to have 21 at this point. Again, uh, we are voting on uh, the substitute. Looks like everybody's in. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you will close the machines and take the vote. 22 in favor, one against, eight abstentions. Okay, 22 yes, one no, eight abstentions, seven not voting. So uh, the motion to approve the substitute passes. Uh, back to Councilman Member Elrod. Thank you, Mr. President. I would defer second reading one meeting and re refer the ordinance to Public Works, Public Safety, and the Traffic and Parking Commission. Okay, so that's committee, a motion, excuse me. motion to defer uh, for one meeting. Again, we're just on the, we're got the substitute in front of us, but we're not passing it on second. It's a motion to defer one meeting and re-refer to the three committees that it was referenced to. All right, do I have a, a second? second? Properly seconded. Any discussion on that? We're on the deferral motion. All in favor say aye. 
Opposed, no. Motion to defer passes. Uh, BL 2018-1442, this is Council Members uh, Vircher and O'Connell. An ordinance approving the acquisition of interest in a parcel of real property from four parties and approving a participation agreement, a license agreement, and an easement agreement, all between the Metropolitan Government of, and Uptown Property Holdings, LLC, in connection with the development of the Nashville Yards project. Council Member Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended um, a two-meeting deferral with the re-referral back to Budget and Finance and Planning, Zoning, and Historical, 7-4-5 against. Okay. And I need committee reports. All right. Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. I was paying attention. Good. Uh, the committee recommended to defer uh, one meeting as amended, and it recommended approval of amendment 10 4 0 against. All right, thank you. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, Public Works. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. We uh, recommended a one meeting deferral with re referral to the Public Works Committee. All right, thank you. Um, so um, I've got Council Member Mendes. Uh, for what purpose? We need to move the amendment. Okay. So, um, uh, so, uh, Council Member Virtual, let me go to you uh, and explain. So, this gets deferred by rule, but you've got an amendment. Do you want to take the amendment on and put the amendment on first before we defer it? I do. I want to go ahead and get the amendment on the bill. All right. So, uh, there's a move for uh, an amendment. Do I have a second? Properly seconded. I'm going to go to Council Member Mendes for explanation of the uh, amendment. Thanks. Um, uh, so we discussed this in budget and finance at some length yesterday. The participation agreement, um, as, as was presented to us, did not have a clawback provision. And uh, this amendment adds a clawback under three circumstances. Um, if uh, National Yards doesn't complete the work that, they, that we've promised to reimburse for, um, if they only do part, part of it, we get the, uh, any money we've paid them back. If they don't complete the full $79 million worth of information Structure that they promised to do for the entire project, uh, we get anything that uh, has been paid to them back. And then the third item is um, adding an enforcement mechanism to make sure that the green space um, has a permanent easement uh, requiring it to remain uh, permanently green and open space. And uh, so I know there's a, a lot of feelings and discussion about the underlying bill that um, this amendment doesn't address in any way, shape, or form. It just covers the, if, uh, if this bill ends up passing, um, that there would be a clawback so Metro could get uh, money back if National Yards did not live up to its obligations. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Davis, on you on the amendment. Okay. Keep you in line. Council Member Gilmore on the amendment. Okay. I think this is a, a great um, amendment. I was trying to understand, though, how are we able to do clawbacks? I was told in the past as a city that we were not allowed to do that. Someone could just explain that to me. Mr. Jamison. I'm not aware of any prohibition on clawbacks. It's an appropriate mechanism. I was always told that we couldn't do them. Well, I'll be doing them from now on. I promise you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Council Member. Okay, so we are um, we are on uh, the amendment. Um, seeing nobody else who wants to discuss the amendment, all in favor of the amendment, indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. So we are on the bill as amendment. But there's a motion to defer. Uh, well, it's an automatic deferral because of uh, Rule uh, 24. Before we get to the automatic deferral, I've got Council Member Scott Davis, and then I'll go back to Council Member Vircher. Council Member Davis. Thank you, Vice, Thank you, Vice Mayor. And I think you've answered the question for it. It's an automatic deferral. It's an automatic deferral. Okay. Council Member Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I hadn't made my, my motion yet, so is it proper for me to make my motion to defer for two meetings with three referrals back to budget and finance, planning, zoning, and historical and public works. So uh, pursuant to rule 24, it's an automatic deferral because of the committees. Will it come back to all committees? It, um, it'll come back to all committees, okay. but it's a one meeting deferral. It's an automatic rule pursuant to rule 24. It's a one meeting deferral. Okay. Uh, budget did two meetings, but um, the other committees did one, and pursuant to Rule 24, it is a one-meeting deferral, so it'll come back on the next agenda. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Okay. Automatic. All right. 
Uh, we are on BL 2018-1443 by Council Member Withers and O'Connell. Uh, this is an ordinance approving a license agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and Verizon Wireless to install in-building radio distribution devices within the Richard Fulton Main Office Building and the Howard Office Building to enhance wireless reception on or within the Richard Fulton Main Office Building. Council Member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Could I get committee reports, please? You got personnel, uh, that's yours, and public works, which is Councilmember O'Connell. Councilmember O'Connell, this is uh, 1443. Yeah, I, I've got the bell. I wasn't sure which committee you were taking first. Uh, okay. Public works was eight in favor, zero against. All right. Uh, back to you, Council Member Withers. Uh, thank you. Personnel met this afternoon, considered the bill, uh, and recommended approval, three in favor, zero against. And I would like to uh, move approval with All a brief right. comment. All right, so I got a, a motion to approve, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Withers. Um, thanks. Just for anyone who's uh, reading this one or for the viewing audience, this is um, a wireless technology enhancement from uh, Verizon. If you are a Verizon subscriber, this helps you to have uh, potentially have a little bit better reception within the Howard Office Building uh, specifically. Uh, we've done this uh, for a couple of metro facilities um, with our Verizon contract. Uh, one very important point is that this is, comes at at no cost at all to Metro government. So just wanted to clarify what this is for. All right, thank and, you. Yeah. Uh, uh, Council Member Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank Councilman Withers as a person who has stayed at the Planning Commission and the Board of Zoning Appeals for many, many hours in that room, as I know we all have, and have been unable to utilize my phone or get work done, et cetera. Um, and I know many community members have also expressed a similar concern when they have to wait um, during long meetings. So I uh, just wanted to express my support and thanks for him filing this. Thank um, you, Council. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I wanted to thank the sponsor as well for bringing this forward. And this is my very public plea for AT&T to do the same thing. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we are on the bill to approve. We're on 1443, uh, approve on second reading. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. Thank you, Councilman we <laughs> Member Withers. Uh, BL 2018-1444 uh, by Council Member uh, O'Connell and Bedney. Ordinance adopting the Geographic Information System Street and Alley Centerline layer with the rec recordation of uh, renaming additions and deletions of acceptances and abandonments as reflected on the centerline layer to date is the official street and alley acceptance and maintenance record for the Ma Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Unfortunately, you all have season tickets to our show. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Here they go. Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. The Planning Committee recommended approval 940 against. All right, back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. The Public Works Committee recommended eight in favor, zero against. All right. Got a motion to approve? I would love to move to approve. Thank move you. to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2018-1445, uh, Council Members Glover, O'Connell, Bedney. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing sanitary sewer main and easement and to accept new sanitary sewer mains, uh, manholes, and easements for property located at 5502 Old Hickory Boulevard. Council Member Glover. Committee reports, please. All right, I got planning and zoning. Council Member Bedney. Committee recommended approval, 940 against. Council Member O'Connell. Thank Public you, Mr. Works. President. Uh, Public Works recommended eight in favor, zero against. All right, Council Member Glover. Move approval. All right, got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Post no, you adopt on second reading. BL 2018-1446, uh, Council Members Elrod, O'Connell, and Bedney. An ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to negotiate and accept permanent and temporary easements for the Blackman Road Stormwater Improvement Project for four properties located on Blackman Road and Overcrest Drive. Council Member Elrod. Committee reports, please. All right, I got Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. The committee recommended approval 10 4 0 again. Council Member O'Connell, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. President. We were in favor 8 uh, 4 0 against. Council Member Elrod. Thank you, Mr. President. As the place where we're going to store all them scooters, I move uh, approval on second reading. All right, that's great. Uh, Council Member Elrod, it's been pr uh, moved to approve, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 
Opposed? No. You adopt on second reading. Bill 2018-1447, Council Member Swope, O'Connell, and Bedney. Uh, ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of National and Destin County to abandon existing sanitary sewer mains, manholes, and easements, and to accept new sanitary sewer mains, manholes, water mains, fire hydrants, and easements for property located at 1203 Pine View Lane. Council Member Swope. Can we get those exciting committee reports, We can get please. those reports. I'm going to Planning and Zoning, Council Member Bedney. The committee recommended approval, 10 for 0 against. Council Member O'Connell. Uh, with equal enthusiasm, Public Works recommended 8 in favor, 0 against. Council Member Swope. And with something as controversial as uh, abandoning a sewer, I move approval. All right, so I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion on the sewer lines and manholes? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt on second reading, 1447. Uh, BL 2018 1448, Council Members O'Connell and Bedney, an ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of National and Destiny County to abandon existing sanitary sewer mains, manholes, and easements, and to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, manholes, fire hydrant, easements for property located at 1430 Bell Road. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to request committee reports, please. All right, Council Member Bedney, planning and zoning. The Planning Committee recommended approval 10 for 0 against. Back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. The Public Works Committee recommended in favor uh, 8 for 0 against. And just on behalf of that committee, I'd like to recommend, uh, wish Councilman Bednay's committee a happy new year. Thank you. That's great. You want to move to approve this? I would one? like to do that, yes. All right. I got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor on 1448 say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on second reading. Bill 2018-1449 by Council Members O'Connell and Bedney. Ordinance authorizing Broadstone Stockyard Flats LLC to install, construct, and maintain aerial and underground encroachments in the right-of-way located at 901 Second Avenue North. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to request committee reports on all the encroachments. Council Member o Bedney, Planning and Zoning. Uh, the committee uh, looked at the obscenity of the encroachment and decided that it was okay to recommend and voted 10 for 0 against. Great. Council Member uh, O'Connell, Planning uh, Public Works. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Public Works Committee had a similarly thorough review and recommended in favor uh, 8 for 0 against. All right. You want a motion to approve? I would love a motion. All to right. Approve, I got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on second reading. Uh, BL 2018-1450, O'Connell and Bedney. Uh, an ordinance to amend the geographic information system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government of Nashville by abandoning alley number 120 right-of-way in Eastman. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Excited about adding another committee report here. I'd like to request all of them, please. So I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to put Council Member Bedney first. Oh, I was distracted, sorry. I'm sorry. Too. The committee recommended approval 10 for 0 against. Council Member Hager, you got traffic and parking. Traffic and parking approved 4 for 0 against. Council Member O'Connell, back to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. The Public Works Committee recommended uh, 8 for 0 against. And you want a motion to approve? I would love a motion to approve. You got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt 1450 on second reading. Bill 2018-1451 by O'Connell and Bedney. Ordinance to amend the geographic information system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County by abandoning a portion of alley number 938 right-of-way and easement. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Let's go over that hat trick again. I'd like to request committee reports, please. All right. Council Member Hager, traffic and parking. Traffic and parking approved for 4 0 against. Okay. Council Member Bedney, planning and zoning. Planning and zoning recommended approval 10 for 0 against. Uh, and back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Public Works recommended 8 in favor, 0 against. All right. I'd like you, to move approval. I got a motion to approve, probably seconded. Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd just like to ask the sponsor if he had eight committee members vote in favor and 0 against, how many more yeses than noes is that? Thank you. <laughs> Council Member O'Connell, you want to answer that? I, I would. I would encourage uh, Mr. Rosenberg just to round up. All right. <laughs> We've already moved past that bill. Uh, we are on 1451. Uh, I got a motion to approve, probably seconded. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 
Opposed? No. You adopt 1451. We are now on bills on third reading. Uh, this is Bill 2018-1361 by Council Member Hall, uh, an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RS-15 SP zoning on properties located at 4927 Buena Vista Pike, north of the terminus of Vista View Drive, 8.93 acres, to permit up to 34 multifamily residential units and eight single-family residential lots. Council Member Hall. Move for approval, please. So um, all committee reports are in. Uh, I got a motion to approve on third reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You approve on third reading 2018-1361. Bill 2018-1393, <clears throat> this is by Council Member Kendall and Wiener. Uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RS5 to MULA, zoning on properties located at 2702, 2704, 2706 Clifton Avenue, 701, 703, 705, and 707 27th Avenue North at the northwest corner of 27th Avenue North and Clifton Avenue, 1.0 acres. Uh, Council Member Kendall. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Do I need a committee report? Uh, Council Member Bedney, Planning and Zoning. Yes, the committee recommended to defer for one meeting, 10 4 0 against. Okay, Council Member Kendall? Yes, I, uh, I would like to move tonight for approval. Do I need to spend the rules on that? So I think he's not. Yeah, I think he's not. Okay, Council Member Bedney? Yes, I'll move for approval. Okay, Council Member Bedney? Yes, I'll move for approval. Deferred a couple of times. I was here the night to thinking I was meeting with the planning commission. I was in the, I mean, not commission, committee. I was in the right church, but the wrong pew. <laughs> I, I, was, I was sitting over here waiting on the meeting. Uh, but. All right. So, uh, Council Member Kendall, uh, we do not have a committee report, which is uh, required by rules from planning and zoning. So, if you have to pass it tonight, you would have to suspend the rules to do that. I would, I would like to spend a rule with a brief explanation, please. All right, so, um, so there is now a request, so let me explain what we've got. Um, pursuant 2018-1393 has been referred to planning, zoning, and historical, okay? Uh, that's the committee was assigned to pursuant to our rules. Um, it has to have a committee report. The committee deferred, the committee, um, did not take an action, it just simply deferred the bill. Um, so we have no committee report. Council Member Kendall is asking for a suspension of the rules uh, so that he can pass the bill. So, everybody clear? So I'm looking, he has asked for a suspension of the rules. Is there an objection to suspension of the rules? Okay, seeing none, Council Member Kendall, you're on your bill. Yes, uh, my understanding is uh, after speaking with members of the committee, at least uh, Ms. Johnson, uh, Nina Johnson, Council Lady Johnson. One of the, the concerns, I think, on this bill was STRs. Uh, the developer is developing along uh, Clifton Avenue, as we well know, everybody was here doing the, um, the hearings that we had, the public hearings. Uh, they, these, uh, this project is the south side of um, Clifton Avenue, and as I explained, uh, I'm opposed to anything going down in the community that relates to MUL uh, or RM20, uh, but not along the, uh, the corridor itself. I think the concern Ms. Johnson expressed to me, and she can, she can speak to it if she wants to, was that some of the existing uh, development there has STRs. Is that, is that correct? And, um, you know, I guess my concern is any MULs or RM20s that we have around the city, I, I guess they have authority. That's, that's something that we don't control. I wish we did. But uh, I talked with the developer, and the, the properties that have been sold that previously were sold to individuals. Only two of them were sold, I think, to LLCs that had the intention of putting uh, the STRs there, the short-term rentals. Now, the ones on the south side is... As we discussed earlier, 20% of those will be uh, for workforce housing and designated in the deeds, and they will be uh, less than 
$200,000, which is, is something you really can't find in my district. But I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what deferring this would, uh, would do. Uh, the residents who, who came here and spoke, they didn't speak against the STRs. They, they just spoke against the density uh, in the area. Uh, I don't think the developer explains to me, at least, that they're not being sold as STRs, but they're being sold to individuals. Now, certainly we can't stop people from going to get a permit once they buy a piece of property that's an MUL or either a, uh, a RM20. So unless someone has some remedy to that, I mean, I have properties that are going to be developed on Buchanan Street, Clarksville Highway, with the same uh, zoning. And, and, and I'm sure there are going to be some uh, STRs that are requested by owners of those properties in those areas, so I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I don't see deferring this as, as having any benefit, so I would encourage you to vote for it. Okay, I've got, um, so you've got a motion to approve. Yes. All right, so properly seconded. Uh, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just, when, when these first came through, there were there were four of them that seemed to all be in the same area together, and I, I didn't know if they were a package deal or not, but two of them, 1395 and 1400, have been deferred um, for a longer period of time with, it seemed like, not much discussion. It was mostly deferred based on the discussion that we'd had on 1393. So I, if I could get a uh, just more of an explanation on how all these four bills that seem to be all related to 27th Avenue and Clifton Avenue um, relate to each other and if there is any any benefit to having them all at land at the same time, because that was the reason I had supported the deferral. Council Member Kendall. Yeah, actually we only have two bills. It's the 20, 2600 block and the 2700 block. I'm, what are the other two that you're speaking of? Bill uh, 1395 and 1400 are not, they're no longer appearing with these because they were deferred for Oh, those are, one, those are on totally a difference. You, you, you're talking about, and I was wondering why those were deferred, and I don't know why they didn't appear now. Those were on Delaware uh, Street, which is uh, totally different from this project. Okay, I was thinking on a map that they all backed up to each no, other no. into the same area. No, they are blocks apart. Okay. Council Member Allen, does that answer your questions? Yes. Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, the reason I asked for the deferral is because uh, this bill and the next bill at the public hearing, we had quite a uh, good numbers of supporter. However, we heard from quite a number of oppo uh, opposition. And I just wanted to ask uh, the sponsor of the bill how the community came about to uh, support this project. And especially the comment uh, came from uh, one of the opponent uh, is they would like to rebuild uh, the community, but not uh, with this uh, type of development. And especially uh, my concern uh, back then uh, when I had that comment was the opposite side, uh, south side of Clifton, uh, same developer and the same people, owns quite a few uh, short-term rental uh, property. It is. Uh, kind of multi-housing unit, but each individual uh, unit is uh, turned into short-term rental. So if this new property is developed like that, uh, maybe the community who wants to build or rebuild a uh, community may not have a proper opportunity to uh, embrace a new community. However, uh, after I heard from, you know, a uh, uh, sponsor of the bill, is more familiar with the area, so I just wanted to hear, uh, have the opportunity to hear from the sponsor. So now I hear uh, from the sponsor, so I will defer to uh, his lead because I know he knows the area more than I do. All right, thank you, Council Member Johnson. Uh, Council, Member Kent, uh, Council Member Hart. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just want to stand and say that Typically, uh, in, in, in a lot of cases, when people in that community have not been able to get the things that they want from Councilman Kinder, they will call upon me. And I have spoken to, uh, well, I actually tried to reach out to 
uh, one of the constituents, but I have not heard from anyone who uh, is against this. I know that the public hearing, we did hear from those individuals, and as Councilman Kendall said, that they were more against the density and not necessarily against the development. So I just wanted to stand in, uh, in support of this uh, development, and I too <coughs> defer to the knowledge that the councilman and the time and effort that he has put into this project. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Scott Davis. Councilman, I'm sorry, I apologize, Chair. Mm -hmm. um, Councilman, Councilman Kendall, now I don't claim to know this area better than you or the Queen of Jefferson Street, um, Councilor Hurt, but I too grew up here in Nashville and and I love East Nashville, but we all know it's, it's never, it, it was a lot of hard work from great neighbors and great leaders to turn that into the paradise where I call it now. And a lot of other people do now. Um, this area, and, and please, Councilman Kendall, please do not be mad at me. But this area needs some love, and I think this development will help certain things over there. And this is an area that over the years, you know, because I was a Boy Scout at Corinthian Baptist Church. And I remember walking down there and through these areas, you know what I mean? You know, and, and, let's, and let's just say I got my dome rocked a few times, okay? And, you know, I know this area very well. And this is an improvement, you know, and and, and I have a lot of friends and a lot of people I grew up with that live over this area. And just like Council Lady Hurt said, the complaints were not about Airbnbs or anything like that. You know, people want the development. They may have some minor issues with the density, but I'm going to stand in support of Council McKendall. You know, he's done a lot of work over here, and they're trying to improve this area. And, you know, as a, as a young man that grew up in the city, and it, for lack of a better word, got his dome rocked in the area, because you know it was the area we got to pray about a lot. But you know, I'm in support. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Hastings. You can thank talk you, about Mr. being a Boy Scout. Yeah, yeah, no, no Boy Scouts on this one. I, this in this this area, uh, Mr. President, is an area that I, I that I Northwest Nashville is my hood. All right, I went to high school at Pearl Cone High School, which is in that area. Of course, I know some of the stories, and I don't know all the old stories that uh, uh, the councilman of this area does, but <clears throat> I can tell you this. I do recall, and I have spoken to some of the, the individuals over in that area because, again, I grew up in that, that, that environment or that, that area. Uh, their concern was basically <clears throat> all around the the layout and the density and a lot of them which we 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 don't have enough time to educate every individual is to understand that we don't control anything that somebody private probably owns a piece of property we can't tell them what and what not to do but we can encourage them to do things that will help out the community after understanding that, they're, they're in a place to where they're realizing that there are some things that can be done. And I do commend the council member, uh, uh, Mr. Kendall, for stepping out and talking with all of them and to meeting with them and going to their homes and all of that good stuff. So I will stand and support him on this, uh, on this bill and anything that's dealing, especially in that area, because this area is coming up. And uh, I don't like the new name that they're putting on, on the area. Uh, you know, somebody asked me later, but uh, I don't like it. But nevertheless, it's something new, and we're looking forward to Nashville growing in the right direction. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I really appreciate the work I, uh, that Council Member Kendall has done, uh, in, in particular in sort of mm -hmm. holding back 
rezonings in the interior of the neighborhoods uh, in that area, but trying to encourage uh, density along the corridors. A lot of times if we do get density along the corridors, that helps us to get businesses like grocery stores and uh, some of those things that we need in communities where they, they may not be. Um, but not all density is good everywhere. But uh, as a city, from a planning standpoint, we do want that density along the corridors. Uh, even in sometimes in the East Nashville area where we have been having redevelopment for decades, we, we actually are still struggling to get good density along our corridors. Um, and so I, I think this is a good opportunity to bring some new life to Clifton itself uh, that may support the business community there that's emerging uh, and hopefully uh, take some of the development pressure off the interior of the neighborhood where you have more of the single family homes. So I, th I think the council member has done a great job with this and look forward to supporting it. Thank you. Council member Swope. Call a question. Okay. Previous question's been called. Um, all those in favor of the previous question say aye. aye. Opposed no. Previous question. We are on um, BL 2018-1393. All those in favor of passing it on third reading, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2018-1393 is adopted on third reading. BL 2018-1394 uh, by Kendall and Weiner. Um, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RS5 and IR to MULA and RM20A zoning on properties located at 707, 709, 711, 715, 717. 26th Avenue North, 2600, 2604, and 2606 Clifton Avenue at the northwest corner of 26th Avenue North and Clifton Avenue, 1.39 acres. Council Member Kendall. Yes, uh, committee report. All right, uh, Council Member Bedney, planning and zoning. The committee recommended a deferral of one meeting, 10 4 0 against. All right, back to you, Council Member Kendall. I'd like to move approval, same reason. Okay, you've got to move for suspension of the rules. Suspension rules, I'm sorry. All right, for the same reason. So I've got a move by Council Member Kendall to suspend the rules to be able to take up the matter today. Is there any objection? Seeing none, Council Member Kendall, you're on your bill. Move to approve as amended. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Council Member Vercher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. If the sponsor can just um, provide us um, the, the proximity of the other uh, parcels that was just rezoned in 1393 to the parcels in 1394, that's also on Clifton. So are we essentially rezoning the whole block? Yes, the block. Okay. Councilmember Kendall? Yes, it's, it's, they're adjacent to each other. Okay. Uh, the 2600 block and the 2700 block. All right. Any other questions? We are on BL 2018-1390. I, I probably need to correct something as well. Uh, Mr. Jemison uh, brought to my attention that uh, the ones you were asking about, Ms. Allen, they were, in fact, a part uh, adjacent to this, but I, I have not, I'm not moving to approve those. Okay. All right. We are on BL 2018-1394. Any other discussion? We're on third reading. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. We're on BL 2018-1398 by Kendall and Weiner, uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from MUIA to SP zoning on property located at 2004 and 2012 West End Avenue, approximately 170 feet southwest of 20th Avenue North, 0.83 acres to permit 360 multifamily residential units, 6,500 square feet of retail or restaurant space, short-term rental property, owner-occupied, and short-term rental property, non-owner-occupied. Council Member Kendall. I believe there's a substitute. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, let's get Could committee get reports first. Committee uh, reports. Council Member Bedney, planning and zoning. Um, the committee recommended uh, to approve the substitute and then to approve the legislation as substituted, 10 4 0 against. All right. Uh, Council Member Kendall. I'd move to approve the substitute. All right. So I got a motion to approve the substitute, properly seconded. With a brief excellent. All right. Motion. Council Member uh, Kendall. In the original uh, proposal, there was to be short term rental, and that's being uh, eliminated uh, out of this uh, SP. Okay. Um, okay, so Councilmember O'Connell on the substitute. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. President. I know that there were uh, considerable concerns expressed uh, by folks after this, and I think, you know, knowing this area is basically across the street from uh, a portion of my district, um, and and having actually heard from Vanderbilt University, which has interests over there, I think there is generally uh, a favorable outlook from area businesses and institutions on this project. I thank Councilman Kendall for uh, his work with the project team here to tighten this up so that it uh, it alleviates the concerns about uh, the use there, and this should be uh, quite a bit of uh, new residential activity in an area where I think it's appropriate. Thank you. All right, thank you, yes, Councilman. One of the other concerns was about Council Lady Murphy. It being cross street from the cathedral, she wanted to make sure her soul was safe. So uh, I assured her that they were in support of this project. Do you want to vote on that? Yeah. <laughs> Move approval. Now I got a motion to approve uh, the substitute, properly seconded. We are on the substitute first. Any other discussion on the substitute? Seeing none, all those in favor of voting on the substitute, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt the substitute. Council Member Kendall, you're back on your bill as substitute. Move approval of the bill as substitute. Got a motion to approve the bill as substitute. Any discussion? It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the bill as substitute on 1398, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt uh, the bill as substituted on 1398. BL 2018-1406 as amended, Council Member O'Connell, ordinance amending Metropolitan Code Section 10.20.110, container requirements to remove the requirements that garbage containers must not be visible from a public street. Council Member O'Connell. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval with a brief explanation. All right, I got a motion to approve on third reading as amended, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Just a reminder that this was a cleanup uh, recommended by Public Works to, to, to more or less move practice, uh, common practice into consistency with the Metro Code of Laws uh, so that we weren't generally putting any members of the public at risk for violations and, and generally public works as uh, citywide activities on solid waste suggest that w we shouldn't see a lot of side effects from this that uh, create any new public nuisances. I think this is mostly a technical cleanup. It's been through the committee, got some helpful amendatory work from Council Member Allen and I would like to renew my motion to approve. Thank you. Okay, again, I got a motion to approve on third. It's been properly seconded. Council Member Murphy, does this have anything to do with uh, your soul? It's uh, yet to be defined, I guess. Um, I do have a confession to make. Uh, <laughs> uh, about 11 years ago, when I first moved into my house, first time living on my own and not in a dorm or apartment or with my parents, um, I got cited by codes for having my trash cans on the street, not realizing that they needed to be up by the house. Um, so I've done some thinking on this bill and I've talked to the sponsor and others. And so what my concern is, is that um, I know, like, I mean, where I live and some of my neighbors, I'm gonna see their trash cans from the street even when they're next to the house. But I have seen some properties that have poured basically concrete pads and are leaving their trash cans not next to a structure such as a fence or the house. And my concern is, is that wind, storms, cars, scooters, could run into these trash cans, and then we are now dealing with litter and trash in the street, which was the problem where I was storing my trash can because cars were hitting it, my trash was getting dumped over. I now leave them by the, the house, you can send an inspector. Um, and so that's my concern. And so when this legislation talks about premises, if, if, um, if Jameson could explain a little bit more about that, I would prefer that this legislation talked about having trash cans up against a structure or something of that nature, just because I'm concerned about when we have a big storm, like Stormwater told me we're gonna have one tomorrow, how many trash cans are gonna get blown over? I think there are some other councilmen who have talked to me about their trash cans being blown over and cans going all over their yard. So um, can we talk a little bit about premises and putting them next to houses and things like that? And is that something that uh, that the council and the body is is open to or the sponsor would be open to clarifying or putting a little bit more teeth into that the um, the 
code section now requires the cans to be placed to the rear or side of the premises. Um, and premises is not defined in the in the code in 17, oh, 17, 16, 030, but in those cases, we just default to Webster's, <clears throat> and Webster's defines premises as including both the structure and the lot. Um, so if, if I'm if I understand what your question is, let's say that you had a major street passing in front of me and, and my house was oriented so that the front of the house sided up to the street. I think the way it's crafted now, you're, you, you would not have containers placed or allowed to be placed on the street because they have to be the, the rear or side of the premises. It's not, it's not based on where the front door is, in other words. I did submit a question because this hinges on whether or not the zoning administrator agrees with that interpretation. I have not yet heard back. I think we're okay. If we're not, if the zoning administrator disagrees, I will absolutely prepare legislation to clarify that um, in lieu of a deferral tonight. Okay. I mean, I'll, I will move forward with this because I think that's where we are tonight. But just with the word of caution, I mean, when considering HPRs, considering those types of things, you know, I think this is similar to some other legislation that there could be some unintended consequences we might need to fix in the future and just want to go on the record to, to make sure that we, you know, if we start turning in and seeing a lot of new citations for trash in people's yards, let's talk about trash cans again. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Murphy. Uh, Councilmember Hastings. Yes, Mr. President, I just wanted to, uh, HBR, she just brought that up, and, you know, I, I'm sitting here a little shaky because I'm, I'm very guilty of some things. Uh, I am trying to figure out, because I'm, I'm having a house currently you know, being built in my backyard, right? And uh, where we're putting the trash cans, what the back, back of the house, you know, the definition of the law, the back of the house may not be the back of the house anymore or the, the front of the street may be where we put those things. So clarity of definition may be something that we look at. I just wanted to make sure, because I don't want to break the law as being a lawmaker, break the law as, as having it, because right now I am guilty, and thank God they have not cited me. But uh, nevertheless, we'll, we'll go with that. But maybe there's some clarity, especially with HBRs. You got two houses on one particular lot, how do we really deal with that? Because I have a cottage. I, actually, my, my particular uh, property is actually cottage zoned. So if you understand what I'm saying, it may be not clear or it may be clear. I have a cottage zone to wear two houses and all of that stuff. All right? So uh, Mr. Jameson is taking notes. Uh, you might want to invite Mr. Jameson out to your house and let him oh. look at your garbage cans. Yeah. Good. All right. Good. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, Council Member Swope. Call a question. Okay. Previous question has been called. Um, all those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Those no. You're on the bill. Uh, we are on BL 2018-1406 as amended. All those in favor of the bill on third reading, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Somebody say no. So I'm going to go back and check. Did somebody say no? No. So um, I guess the question is, if we've, uh, if there's a no on third reading, we have to go on the board. So, um, so I'm checking. Did somebody say no? Okay. Because, all right. So the bill passes on third reading. Bill 2018, 14, 19 as amended. Council members Vircher, Hurt, and others. This is an ordinance amending Title IV of the Metropolitan Code to expand and update the existing procurement non-discrimination program originally established by legislation in 2008. Council member Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I would like to move for approval with a brief comment. All right, so i uh, got a, a motion to approve on third reading. And remember this bill is, a, is amended, properly seconded. Back to you, Council member Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I want to begin by saying um, what a journey, what a moment. Um, we've had several disparity studies, benchmark reports, um, many bites at this apple, and we stand on the, the shoulders of, of many giants that have gotten us to this point. 
I would like to thank um, Mayor Brawley uh, for his support um, in this endeavor, the Minority Business Advisory Council, Griffin and Strong, Metro Legal, uh, Metro Purchasing Agent, um, the Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer, the NAACP, the Urban League, the Buffalo Pack, and a host of all organizations that participated in the meetings. And of course, uh, my dear colleagues here, here in this chamber. This is a proud moment for this city. This is a proud moment for this body. The disparity studies, we all know that um, they just validated and confirmed and reconfirmed again and again what we all knew um, as a body. And what we knew was is that there were significant disparities between um, business opportunities for women and business opportunities uh, for minorities. Your vote tonight conveys a strong message to the city and to um, other entities that seek to do business within Metro. And that message is, it's not gonna be business as usual anymore. That message is, is that we are a city that we take equity very seriously. With that, um, I don't wanna get too emotional here um, regarding this piece of legislation. I'm just proud of the work um, that we've done. All of you as sponsors, many of you participating in, in several other meetings, meeting with various stakeholders across the city. You know, again, this has been a long time coming, and this is a proud moment uh, for our body. And with that, I ask for your support. Thank you, Council Member Vercher. Uh, there's a motion to approve uh, this bill as amended 1419 uh, properly. Seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. Uh, we are now on substitute bill BL 2018-1420 by council members Lee, Bedney, and O'Connell. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to acquire temporary and permanent easements through negotiation, condemnation, and acceptance for the Clean Water Nashville Hurricane Creek Pipe Improvement Project for 18 properties located along Murfreesboro Road, Hurricane Creek Boulevard, J.P. Hennessy Drive, Hell Quaker Boulevard, Ridgestone Parkway, and Firestone Parkway in Davidson County and 10 properties located along Waldron Road, Old Waldron Road, International Boulevard, and Bridgestone Parkway in Rutherford County. Council Member Lee. Yes, sir, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, may I have committee reports? I think all the committee reports are in. Are in. You're good. All right, I'd like to make a motion to approve, Motion please. to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no, you adopt on third reading. BL 2018-1421 by Council Members Dow, Virtue, and others. Ordinance authorizing the acquisition of certain right-of-way easements and property rights by negotiation or condemnation for use in public projects of the Metropolitan Government, initially for purposes of Public Works Department Project Number 2018-R-7, roundabout at Blue Hole Road and Pettus Road. Council Member Dow. Thank you, committee reports. All the committee reports are in. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Council Member Bedney. I just want to thank Council Lady Dowell for carrying this legislation. Uh, that roundabout was a request of the people of District 31 at the, uh, when we started talking about the, um, the park over there. Uh, people were concerned about traffic. The parks people uh, agreed to work with us in, in making this improvement. And we're looking forward to having uh, a way to move around there that is safe, that makes uh, that road safer, and it and lets people enjoy of the park. So thank you, Council Lady, for your help. Anderson's next. Is my mic still Thank on? you, Council Member Bedney. Uh, Council Member Dow, any other comments? I just want to say um, you're welcome, and I'm glad that he publicly acknowledged that this roundabout is at his request, because I know the sentiment among many communities that roundabouts are not very favorable. They don't look upon them. So I just want the public to, you know, take note that this is Councilman Bedney's Blue Hole Road roundabout, not Jacobia Dow's. Thank you. So after this meeting, we're all going to go and paint that on the on the roundabout. Uh, we are on third reading. This is BL 2018-1421. No other comments. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. Uh, council member, um, I'm sorry, BL 2018-1422 by Council Members Henderson, Bedney, and O'Connell. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to negotiate and accept payment, permanent and temporary easements for the uh, 
Clydellen Court Stormwater Improvement Project for 15 properties located at Clydellen Court, Cheek Road, and Meadowwood Drive. Council Member Henderson. Thank, Thank you, you, Vice Mayor. That's Clydellen Court. Um, but with all committee reports in, I would move approval, please. All right. So I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. Uh, BL 2018-1423 by Council Member Sledge, Bedney, and O'Connell. Ordinance authorizing LVH LLC to install, construct, and maintain underground and area encroachments in the right of way located at 1234 Martin Street. Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move approval. Uh, all reports are in. Motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. 1423 on third reading. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Got a motion to adjourn. Properly seconded. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. We are adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.org.